Two days ago, Dale Earnhardt, still hurting from injury suffered at Talladega, could have settled for just getting his car into the top 25. Or he could have opted for a visit to some beautiful surrounding scenery, but not Dale. On the speedway, hopping and skipping, but he's out there in the Goodrich Chevrolet. Dale Earnhardt. With a broken sternum and clavicle, wouldn't Dale have been more comfortable cruising Lake Seneca? Wouldn't an afternoon of leisurely fishing have been more enjoyable? Earnhardt trying to beat Dale Jarrett's time. He's got a good lap going. I got a check point over here. He thinks it's the turn 11. He's right up there with Ricky Rudd and Dale Jarrett. Let's see if he can do it. Former two-time pole setter. He did it. He's on the pole. Unbelievable 73.054 seconds, folks. 120.733. 120.73 feet. Not only did he sit on the pole, but a new track record with a broken clavicle and a broken sternum. Unbelievable. Soaring to new heights on the track, not in the air, was what Dale wanted and got. How difficult is getting out of the car Sunday going to be? Well, I don't know now if I'm going to get out. of <laughs> this thing, you know, I might go a little further than what they expect. So today, as the Dale and Dale show is on the front row, we'll be watching them and 37 others head into turn number one. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, after what you just saw, Bob, this is the hottest selling t-shirt. In fact, these t-shirts are sold out here at Watkins Glen, folks. On the pole at the Glen, it hurt so good. Dale Earnhardt, they arrived at 11.15 last night, and they are sold out. The big question is, what will our pole sitter and new track record holder do? Dale, I gotta ask you, how do you play it? Is it the day you stay? Or you, do you come out of the car? Early caution, I'll come out of the car. If you have a, first, you know, we run to the first pit stop, I might try to stay in. It depends on how I feel. I'm a little sore in my shoulder this morning, but uh, we'll just see how it goes. Can you lead the first lap and get those five bonus points? I don't know. Dale, Dale, one of the Dales will. <laughs> <laughs> Remember last week, Skinner led a lap, and those five bonus points allowed this guy to go into second place in the point standings over the 88 car, who is two points behind him in third spot. Dale Jarrett starts outside of the row one, and Jarrett would like to lead the first lap as well. So it'll be Dale and Dale when they drop the green flag. Who would lead lap one? Well, Earnhardt wants it very badly, and so does Jarrett. Well, with more on the walking wounded, let's go back in the past where Bill Weber is standing by. Well, Jerry, last Saturday afternoon, Kyle Petty cut a tire coming out of turn four at the Brickyard. He hit everything except the Indiana Lottery. He was sore. He even got his ponytail stepped on by a safety crewman as they were lifting him into the ambulance. Now his motor is fired for today's butt at the Glen. But Kyle knew early on Friday he would not be able to go to the distance here. He's still too sore. Kyle Petty has won at this track before, but not today. He has Todd Bodine standing by and hopes to get him in the car early in the race. Bill Elliott, on the other hand, missed five races after his bone-breaking wreck at Talladega. Today, he will miss number six. This is the McDonald's Ford sitting here on pit road, but that's not Bill in the car. Elliott is just too sore to try and tame this roller coaster that's disguised as a road course. So the team decided to race for the win instead of run for points. And the McDonald's crew ordered up one veteran road racer to go. That man is Dorsey Schrader, who just happened to win the Trans Am race here on Saturday. Dorsey was going to be a member of our ESPN broadcast crew today. But Bob Jenkins, he got an even better seat. In the seat of the McDonald's Ford, and Dorsey, this is Bob up in the booth. It's nice and air conditioned up here. We got some cool soft drinks. I'm sure you'd rather be here, but uh, you're down there and you got a big job ahead of you. What do you think here, moving up through the traffic? Well, you know, I'm really privileged to get this opportunity with the McDonald's car, Bill Elliott. Uh, I want to get this thing, you know, just keep a, a safe race and not get tied up in a wreck. Get this thing as far fun as we can. I've, I've got very little time in it, but we're very comfortable in the car. And, uh, man, I just can't wait. I'm all excited. I don't want to be up there. I want to be right here. All right. Good luck to you, Dorsey, and have a good run. Meanwhile, let's go. Punch. All right. Back to Jerry Punch. 
Hey, thanks, Dorsey. One of the guys you're going to have to contend with today, this guy right here, a marked man. Actually, it's Mark Martin. Mark going for four in a row. He won three consecutive holes and three consecutive buds at the Glen. He said, I'm not going to win pole number four. The car isn't quite that good. It was losing qualifying. But come Sunday, I might get my fourth consecutive win. Mark winless in 1996. Remember, he won four a year ago. He finished fourth at the Brickyard 400, and he's going for four in a row today. Now, farther back in the pack, his former teammate, Wally Dollaback, didn't get a chance to qualify for the front. They broke a rocker on on Friday, and Dollaback came out and qualified 31st. But he's a runner-up here twice, back in 93 and 95. Two of the last three years, that former Trans Am and SCCA champion was awfully good on the road course. Today, he starts the hunt in the Hayes Modem Ford from 31st. Let's go back to Bill Weber. Well, Jerry, Watkins Glen is a hungry monster that attracts its prey with beauty and speed that traps it in the turns. On Friday, this course swallowed up three race cars, showing its appetite is pretty indiscriminate. It got Jimmy Spencer's Ford, it got Johnny Benson's Pontiac, it also got Ricky Craven's Chevrolet. They were all devoured in the inner loop. Saturday, it had Robert Presley's Chevy for dessert. They are not the first four guys to be disappointed and lose a car here, but they're also not the last. ESPN, the world leader in motor sports coverage, welcomes you live to Watkins Glen International in Watkins Glen, New York for the NASCAR Winston Cup Bud at the Glen. And as we head into the 20th race of the 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup season, the points race is very, very tight with the first three separated by just 63 and the first four by 104. We've seen Jeff Gordon move from third to first to fourth in the last three races. And six through 10 are separated by just 57 markers. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Jenkins and welcome to Watkins Glen, our second and final road course race of 1996. And road racing always offers a lot of excitement. We usually see a lot of cars on the lead lap at the end of the race and some new faces running up front. But the first bit of excitement is going to see the Dale and Dale show as they head into turn number one. And that's where Benny Parsons will be stationed throughout the race. BP? Hey, folks, and Bob, they'll take the green flag. They'll accelerate from the start-finish line down to turn one. Second gear, third gear, fourth, probably 130, 40 miles an hour. Then they got to slam on the brakes and go into turn one, a 90-degree right-hander. Second gear, probably can take it at 60, 70 miles per hour. And, yes, who will get through turn one will determine who leads that first lap. When we asked Earnhardt just a moment ago, he said... Dale will lead the first lap. Dale Earnhardt or Dale Jarrett, they'll both be battling as hard as they can. Once you get through here, two, three, and four. That's the S's leading to the long backstretch where they'll probably hit 160, 70 miles an hour. And Ned, they come to you and got to slam on the brakes once again. They really do, Benny. In fact, there are four turns in a hurry as they come into the inner loop here, so they do have to slam on the brakes, gear the car down, and be very brave if you try to come in here side by side with someone. It's tough for most of them to get through their single file, but if they try to get through their double file in that inner loop, somebody's not going to make it, and it's going to cause a big mess. And then, of course, once they come out of that inner loop, they go into the long, sweeping carousel, turn number nine here. That's where they start back downhill after they came up the hill through the S's. So a lot of action normally in this part of the track, and we'll be here to cover it, Bob. And you just could not order a better day. Sunshine, nice cool temperature, a nice breeze blowing, and thousands and thousands of race fans have gathered here to watch these 39 cars and drivers compete at the butt of the Glen. We'll be back in just a moment. Get ready for an afternoon of racing here on ESPN Speed World. It's the Bud at the Glen from Watkins Glen, New York. And it's being brought to you by Budweiser, brewery fresh taste, guaranteed by Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards for engine protection. By Split Fire, enter the performance zone with Split Fire Performance V spark plugs. And by the NASCAR Story. To order, call 871-NASCAR. 
Let's take a look at the starting lineup for today's race. Dale Earnhardt on the pole with a new track record. Alongside will be Dale Jarrett, the winner last week in Indianapolis. Second row has Ricky Rudd in the tied board along with Terry Labonte, the current points leader. Jeff Gordon will start in fifth position. Alongside will be Rusty Wallace. Ernie Urban goes from seventh, and Michael Waltrip will be on the outside of row number four. The fifth row will be Joe Nemechek and Mark Martin going for four in a row here. Ken Schrader and Brett Bodine make up the sixth row. Row number seven, it'll be Jeff Bodine and Bobby Labonte. John Andretti and Kyle Petty scheduled to go in row number eight. The ninth row, Butch Leisinger driving the Cartoon Network car today and Lake Speed. Dorsey Schrader substituting for Bill Elliott starts in the 10th row along with Robert Presley. Ward Burton and Ted Musgrave are in the 11th row. The 12th row, Jeff Burton and Rick Mast. Row 13, Kenny Wallace and Bobby Hillen. The 14th row, Sterling Marlin and Daryl Waltrip. Row number 15 will be Jerry Mayfield and Bobby Hamilton. Wally Dallenbach and Derry Cope go in the next row. Then in row number 17, it's Jimmy Spencer and Dick Trickle. Hutt Strickland and Johnny Benson are in the 18th row. The 19th row consists of two provisional starters, Ricky Craven and Morgan Shepard, and Dave Marcus will start in the 39th position. He, too, a provisional starter. Getting set for the green flag, and we have the distinct pleasure of having Bill Elliott in the booth with us for the first few laps of this race. Welcome, Bill, and sorry you can't be down the race car, but you sure got a good substitute in it. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's hard to give up sitting in a race car to come up here and sit in the booth. You know, from the fan standpoint, you know, I want to be in the car, you know, I want to do what I got to do. But I didn't feel comfortable running the whole race. I felt Doris could do a good job. I'm about out of breath from running up the steps. <laughs> it is a tough climb, and we appreciate you doing so, although your leg, I know, has to be hurting. The green flag comes out, and the butt of the Glen is underway. BP, who's it going to be in one? It's Dale. Earnhardt, that is. Dale Jarrett's going to get in second spot. Labonte runs, and Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon side by side. A lot of cars side by side. And so far, they all have made it through the corner. It'll be a very important five bonus points that the leader of this first lap picks up. And, of course, Dale Earnhardt wants to pick up those five points very badly in case he does have to get out of the car and turn it over to David Green. They're heading toward the interlude for the first time. And they come in there. Dale Earnhardt still in the lead with about a three or four call in lead, Bob, as they come through there. So he's in good position to lead that first lap. Dale Jarrett has Terry Labonte right on his bumper. As everyone got down in single file coming through the interlude. And it looks like they all made it. And Earnhardt now heading out towards turn number 10. He's built up a pretty healthy lead over Dale Jarrett here on lap number one. And it appears as if he might be able to lead his first lap. Michael Waltrip and Joe Nemechek go through corner number 10. Wheel to wheel and heading for turn number 11, which will bring them back to the start-finish line and complete lap number one. And indeed it is Dale Earnhardt leading the lap, picking up the bonus points. And you'll recall at Indianapolis last week, the reason that uh, Earnhardt moved up to second in points is because Mike Skinner picked up the bonus points for staying out there and leading. Thought we might have a battle for second there for a moment as Labonte took a look at the inside of Jarrett, but Jarrett uh, held on to second. And to come through the S's one more time, Earnhardt still with a comfortable lead. It's nice to look up in that rear view mirror when you're going through the S's and you have to get up here to the inner loop and slow down and know that somebody's not right on your back bumper. So you can slow down and gear down a little bit more at your own pace. Jarrett moves in a little bit closer to come in here, but Earnhardt still has that comfortable lead. And Perry Labonte is right on Jarrett and certainly right on Perry Labonte is Ricky Rush. Bill, you've driven against Dale Earnhardt for many, many times. How long do you think he's going to be out there? Well, I tell you what, Dale's driven pretty hard right now. I think from the entry he suffered at Talladega. You know, he's trying to prove to himself, I guess, that he, he needs to go out and compete, continue to race. But in his situation, that's what he needs to do. Unlike me, once I missed a race, it was irrelevant if I miss another one today or try to go on. But like for me, I didn't feel comfortable enough with my legs in the car, trying to keep my timing down, keep shifting, and everything you have to do at this particular racetrack. I didn't have enough strength in my left leg to continue on. I felt like I could probably run half the race. But if you've got to get out, you might as well say, go ahead and let Dorsey run the car and worry about that from that point on. Let's call on our resident doctor to explain more medically why Bill was hurting so much in the car. Doc? 
Bob is remarkable that Bill could even qualify the car. The big high-speed left-hand turn, right-hand turns mean his left leg bounces against the left side of the seat. And Bill is a left foot breaker, so that's the leg that has the plate called the screws in it. So Bill, you, you impressed me by disqualifying the car. But I can't imagine that leg would have lasted very long on that brake pedal, at least on the left side of the seat there, right where that uh, long screw and plate says. So certainly, I admire you for getting out of the car and letting Dorsey get in. Wally Dallenbach is moving up, started 31st and is up to 25th. He's to the inside of the 22 car of Burton and taking another position. Yes, he is. He's doing it at ease here through this turn, Bob. He gets one, at least one, every time he comes through the long sweeping turn number nine. Racing for the 23rd position. And here we go with second and third position is Dale Jarrett and Terry Labonte. And Ted Musgrave is headed the wrong way on the racetrack. What a horrible feeling that must be, Phil. I'm telling you, that's the worst position you can ever be in. But, you know, if everybody can say you can kind of get around you where you get turned back in the other direction, you're doing good. But I'll tell you what, that's no place to be here. And that was coming off the of turn 11, Bob, it looks like. And he tried to spin the car around, but the back end wouldn't break loose for him. Now it looks like the car died. And he does have it, I think, refired, but nevertheless, a full course caution is coming out. Yes, indeed, it is being displayed from the uh, starter stand here in front of us. Musgrave is underway again, though. The question is, will Earnhardt stay out, or will he come in and put David Green in the car? He said he needed an early car supply. Here it is. This may be a break for him, but he may stay in that race car. Man, that thing looked awfully good out there, Benny. It looked like he was just able to pull away at will, and it's going to be tough to get out of there unless he's hurting awfully bad, but we'll see. Jerry, what are they thinking down there? Well, Dale told me that if they got a full course caution early, he would get out. As you see, David Green uh, getting ready behind us. Dale, David in that Goodwrench uh, uniform. That's the Caterpillar helmet he wears in the Bush Series. But, of course, as the caution flag waves, Dale didn't want a full course caution, quite honestly. He wanted to run the full 90 laps. But now he may have to be true to his word. And when the pits open up here momentarily, he may have to come in for a driver change. The plan early on for Earnhardt was this. He wanted to try to run another qualifying lap on the first lap and leave and get those five bonus points. Then he said, look, I'm going to get comfortable. I'm going to fall back in line. I know Dale Jarrett will be there. I know Rusty will be there, the 10 car and the 5 car. So I'm going to find me a nice, comfortable place, maybe 4th, 5th, 6th, or 7th, and ride and stay out of trouble. Of course, they hadn't called him yet. And now the caution came out, and the strategy may totally change. He may indeed come down and climb out of the car. But guys, you know the exact same strategy that Bill Elliott's losing here using here would work here. The longer Dale Earnhardt stays in there, you know, when they change drivers, the David Green's going to have to go to the rear, and it just takes a long time to work your way back up there. So the earlier they can stop, the better off they'll be, if indeed he's going to get out of it at all. Time will only tell, and we'll know here in about a half a lap. We went to this full course caution because of Ted Musgrave's spin. It happened in corner number 11. That's the final turn that leads on to the front stretch, and the uh, car just slid sideways on him. Well, there could have been some contact with the car behind. We have no idea because uh, we caught the spin at the last half of it, but there could have been some contact that caused Musgrave to go around. You saw everybody go either to the inside or outside and miss Musgrave, and that's when you have to pay particular uh, close attention, Bill, to those corner workers that help you with the yellow flags in that particular area. Well, see, in our position, uh, the corner workers are very critical here because they're our eyes as far as what you can see. Most of the time here, you try to rely on a spotter, but you can't have a spotter in every corner, so you rely on the corner workers to do their job, whatever you're going to do. It's going to be interesting to see if Earnhardt and Silas come in here. I'd say leading the race, it's going to be a tough decision from his standpoint because I mean it's hard to get out and end up having to put David Green at a disadvantage even this early in the race but just like with Dorsey start for me he's already up to, to 31st so he's doing well so it's a hard decision to make and I, I don't envy those guys for what they're having to do but for me I didn't have really a lot of choice. Let's go back down to Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Bob, the decision has been made, and apparently Earnhardt will come down pit road. David Green has been told to put the helmet on. they got the crew standing by. And if you remember last week at the Brickyard 400, as you look at David Green getting ready to climb in that car, I don't think there was as much pain with the actual broken bones in Earnhardt's clavicle 
and sternum as there was emotional anguish when he had to climb out of that car after six laps at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This is awfully tough for Dale Earnhardt. He wants to drive this race, but he was told by Richard Childress, by wife Teresa, that you got to look at the big picture. you got to look at Michigan next week, the high-speed oval. And, of course, Bristol, Tennessee coming up in a couple of weeks. And I think even some of his close friends say, hey, I know. Clint Eastwood's your hero, but after what you did on Friday in qualifying, you may be Clint Eastwood's hero. <laughs> so apparently Earnhardt will come down momentarily and have a driver change. Something has happened to Hutt Strickland's car. It's smoking. It's going very slowly on the racetrack, and so Hutt is in trouble. David Green and Richard Childress are discussing the situation. The cars are nearing corner number 11 and the uh, entrance to Pitt Road, and so we're going to know here in just a moment if indeed they are true to their word. If no, he is staying out there. Not a surprise, and we can hear even here in the booth the cheers from the fans. <laughs> they like it that uh, Dale's staying out there, Doc. Well, well, here's the conversation, guys. I mean, what a surprise, huh? Richard Childers says, Dale, come on in, guys. Come on in. Let's go ahead and make the change and, uh, and let David get in the car. We'll be okay. Dale said, all right. That was in the backstretch. Now, there was a lot of discussion, which I won't repeat, between the backstretch and turn seven. But basically, the last thing that was said by Childers and the crew was, Dale, it is your call. You make the call. And as you saw a moment ago, Dale indeed made the call and will stay out. The fact that he didn't pit means he'll probably run the entire 90 laps. He wants to win this thing. But we are going to have a driver change further up pit road while Bill Weber is standing by. Well, Kyle Petty didn't need any encouragement. He's expected to bring the Coors Light Pontiac to pit number 11. It is here now, passes Dorsey Schrader, who's on pit road getting fuel and tires. And Kyle Petty rolls to a stop, already with the belt undone. He's wearing a rip race, Todd Bodine, the Bush Brand National regular in his Cape Carnival Cruise Fire suit, has the helmet on and is ready to climb in. They're gonna gingerly get Kyle out of the car. You can see him grimace as he climbs through the window. A crew in through the passenger side and Todd Bodine will take over for Kyle Petty. So Todd Bodine, now third in the Bush Grand National points with one win in 1996, jumps into Kyle Petty's car. Back in just a moment. It's the butt at the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race from Watkins Glen International. Under our first caution of the day, Ted Musgrave spun down in turn number 11 but we're just about to go back to racing. The big story is at the moment, Dale Earnhardt originally said, yeah, I'll come in and turn the steering wheel over to David Green, and then he decided not to. And so Earnhardt will be at the front of the field when the Green comes out to restart our event. I think they ran something like 56 laps last year in this race without the first caution. We had our first one here on lap number four, but now back to racing. Rusty Wallace making a move in turn one. To the inside of Ricky Rudd, and Jeff Gordon is right behind him. And normally, the inside groove is the best one there, but he couldn't quite pull it off that time, Bob. It's ahead now, up through the exit. Riding with Rusty Wallace. They get back in single file through the exit. That's pretty narrow up through there, and they really get a lot of speed. I don't know if Bill Ellis ever had, a, had uh, any any kind of speed mechanism on his car to up here testing or not the bill i think they get probably 165 170 there before they start slowing down yeah it's a pretty pretty hard deal there so, you know before they put the interloop in there, i think we run like almost 185 or something like that up the back so you know the interloop really helps slow the cars down and it's kind of tough to, to negotiate the first time we came up here but uh, it's quite an interesting corner when you get there network car which is being driven here by butch leitzinger a uh, road racing expert in fact the 1993 imsa gtu champion and the 1994 24 hours of daytona champion it has moved up to 13th position at the moment so he is definitely on the move started in 17 spot but butch is already up to 13th the car down here on the inside is brett bodine oh, and that's Passing how it michael waltrip yeah michael comes right back and Michael takes the position, and Leitzinger right down on the inside as well. I think he's got the preferred line there now. Red comes back on the inside, though, and takes the position back. Well, they do race up through these S's. Sure do. 
plenty of room up there. Nice wide racetrack. In through the inner loop again, and Earnhardt has pulled out to just about uh, as much of an advantage as he had before we had the first caution. As you see, the rest of the field come into the inner loop. There's Leitzinger and uh, Jeff Burton. Bill is standing by with Kyle Petty, who got out of the car and turned it over to Todd Bodine. And it's painful just to watch you walk up here. The only thing that doesn't hurt today is the ponytail. How do you feel? pulling a bunch of macho crap on you, man. I'm hurting from head to toe. Uh, my hair does hurt. I think it hurts too, man. But, uh, you know, I, I got in, I tried. I, I was re very fortunate. I hate that for Ted, but very fortunate to get an early caution so I could get out. Like I told Benny this morning, you know, you wreck in Indianapolis and you're 100% and you end up this hurt. I didn't want to put myself in a position to get in a wreck, tear up a car and get hurt any worse than I am. So it was just best that I got out. Todd will do a good job at it. Okay, that's Kyle Petty. He's out of the car. Todd Bodine's in. Jeff Gordon lost a couple positions there, Bob. Yeah, he sure did. He lost it to Ernie Irvin. Now Joe Nemechek has gotten around him. So uh, Jeff got out of position and lost a couple of spots. Boy, Kyle took a heck of a ride at Indianapolis, didn't he? That was scary. That was totally unbelievable. You know, the, the things, how fast we corner in these cars this day and time, it's hard to believe. It's hard for the fans to imagine. You know, even whenever uh, Jeff had the tire right front blowout going to wall off turn four there, you know, he hit it just a little bit, but it's still hard. And I'm sure Kyle really felt it because, you know, hitting it and then getting hit by Sterling and then hitting the wall again, it, it's a tough way to go. We're riding with Ken Schrader, who's running in 10th position. Up ahead is Mark Martin, and up ahead of Mark is Jeff Gordon. Ooh, looks like Jeff locked him up there a little in the corner. Yeah, Jeff, I noticed Earnhardt did a little bit going into turn one the last lap there, locked up the right front. That's one thing that, that was hard for me to do with my leg the way it was. It's hard to get your timing just right. You know, you got to break first, then cut into the corner, because if you if you over break once you make the commitment to turn down in the corner, you'll lock up one of the front tires, and then that just flat, flat spots the tires, and then you have to kind of work around that, and it, it's really hard on a race car, but uh, that was kind of the problem I was having, getting my timing down and keeping the strength in my left leg. Here are the Bodine brothers. Yeah, running side by side, Ned. Is, yeah. uh, they should be within your view here before long. Yeah, that's Brett takes the position. He's in the car number 11, Jeff, in the black number 7 car as they head in to the inner loop. Now Dale Jarrett closed up a little bit on Dale Earnhardt, got it up down to about three car lengths now. As we watch this group of cars come through, that's Bobby Labonte in the Joe Gibbs Interstate Batteries car, number 18, right behind the Bodine brothers. And right behind the body is Lake Speed, who's a good road racer. He had a lot of experience before he came to Winston Cup racing. Lake Speed did in go-karts on road racing. And by the way, this is his 350th NASCAR Winston Cup start. Now riding on top of the Wally Dollaback, Hayes Modem's car. Wally has moved steadily toward the front. Up ahead of him now is Jeff Burton. See if he can carry that momentum that he's got built up into turn one. Not uh, quite enough, not quite close enough to Jeff to make a move at the moment. You know, we've been talking about how difficult this track is to run and we'll be in Bristol in a few weeks. I would imagine that you and probably Dale are looking forward to next week in Michigan, which is a relatively uh, easy racetrack, if you will, in terms of physical ability. Michigan's great. You know, the one thing about it and, and the ovals that I've run up to this point, you can kind of get your legs over at the right-hand side of the foot box to be able to leave them there. You don't have to move around a lot. But here, you've got to be very mobile with your legs. And because you turn left and right, it takes a lot of muscle to kind of keep it going back and forth. And when we go to Michigan, Michigan's such a great place. I've had a lot of good success there, run well there, and, and it's just a, a lot easier of a place. But going to Bristol, yeah, that's going to be tough on everyone. It sure is. Watching the rest of the field come through now. By the way, the eight car of Hutt Strickland is uh, behind the wall with a clutch problem, and that's the only one that isn't on the racetrack at the moment. 38 cars remain out there, and they're being led by Dale Earnhardt over Dale Jarrett, Terry Labonte, Ricky Rudd, and Rusty Wallace. Back in just a moment.
ESPN Speed World coverage of the Bud at the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race live from Watkins Glen, New York. And this is what I call fast food. Now, this is the suspension cam, which is on Bill Elliott's car that is being uh, driven today by Dorsey Schrader. Actually, this is uh, looking... It's on the front no, bumper. looking to the back of the car. On the front bumper, looking back at both front tires. Right, Bill? That's correct, man. You're, you're doing a good job. You're a little out of breath, <laughs> out of breath. you're doing a good job. <laughs> I'm not down in turn one, folks. I'm in the booth. He finally made it to the yes, booth. Yes, yes. Stopping at three or four concession stands on the way, I might add. And there we see the McDonald's car, Dorsey Strader, running 29th currently. The little inset is the car as it goes around turn. What is that, turn nine? Well, I don't know what they're renaming these things. I think it's turn nine, isn't it? Yeah, it's turn nine. Let's see, let's see what happens when he turns left. Hey, Dorsey's doing a good job. You know, he made a pit stop during that caution and has worked his way back up to, as you say, 29th position and, and position there to maybe get another one or so. As you can see that the tire here on the right gets real light. In fact, there's a little bit of daylight. You could uh, car the tire lifts completely off the racetrack. But that is the left front tire that you're indicating. It is on the right of your screen, folks, but that's the left front tire when they go on the You know, it's amazing watching that, how much the suspension moves here. You know, I was watching even earlier when Earnhardt was leading the race going into the inner loop, how much the left front tire moved off the ground. You there you go. Pick up, pick up off the ground there. The different points on the racetrack depend on how you're in a throttle, how you brake, how you come off, will depend on how you carry that tire up off the corner. He's moved up another position. He's up to 28th now. So, uh, boy, long way to go from the back of the pack. But if anybody can do it, the road racer, Dorsey Schrader, can. And Terry Labonte has taken second position away from Dale Jarrett. That's the lead, isn't it? No. Oh, second position. Well, Earnhardt stayed out there. That's yeah, right. He's still uh, pretty there he far is. away. While I was moving, <laughs> while I was walking over here, <laughs> Earnhardt stayed out. Okay. Yes, he did. Um, not surprising, though, no, huh? No, not really. You did stop for a cheeseburger, didn't you? I wish I could have, but I did. <laughs> Pretty good battle for second spot is, or third spot, actually, Jarrett, Rudd, Rusty, and Ernie Irvin. On top of Rusty's Miller, looking back at Ernie Irvin's Ford. This is the car they call Killer, or at least uh, Rusty does. Boy, Ernie's looking to every direction there to try to find a way around Rusty Wallace. Ernie started in seventh place. He now is running in the sixth position. Really stalking Rusty Wallace as they go through turn nine here. And you see that Rusty had to get off the gas a little bit up in that turn nine. Not able to come off that corner wide open then. See, a number of cars uh, slip a little bit as they come off of there. But Terry Labonte has driven away from Dale Jarrett after he got around him, so he might be closing in on Dale Earnhardt. We can see that Labonte just isn't that far behind Earnhardt. It goes down in the corner and gets ever closer, and Rudd takes a look on the inside of Jarrett. see Mark Martin and Joe Nemechek, Jeff Gordon slipping back. Gordon is currently in the ninth spot. Here's Mark Martin going for four wins in a row. He was going for four pole positions in a row here, but unfortunately did not get that accomplished. But he is still uh, going for the fourth win in a row here at Watkins Glen. Joe Nemechek right behind him, then Jeff Gordon and Ken Schrader, who hangs in there in 10th position. 15 laps completed. This is a 90-lap race here at Watkins Glen. Earnhardt is your leader at the moment, followed by Labonte, Jarrett, Rudd, and Wallace. Back at Watkins Glen and NASCAR Online at www.nascar.com will bring you real-time electronic timing and scoring that Winston Cup officials use to monitor the races. You'll also be able to watch the progress of any car on the track and even print out a scoreboard to follow along with each race. NASCAR Online, www.nascar.com. Bobby Hamilton makes a pit stop and rolls back out. Got some damage to that left front fender. Say that he's knocked the fender in on the tire. That's why the unscheduled pit stop to pull that fender. 
And the crew telling him, be careful on pit road. You had to stop once. Don't get a ticket for speeding. Here comes Earnhardt. He's going to be lucky to stay in the same lap. Don't have to go hard because that's Earnhardt behind you, bud. <laughs> there he is. Dale Emmer, you're exactly correct. That black car is Earnhardt, the leader. Now, we also had a spin while we were in break. It involved John Andretti, and it was a spin, an obvious contact with uh, the wall because he came away from it with some damage. Well, maybe it was contact with another car. Yes, it was. <laughs> no, we talk about the left front damage on the 43 car. That's what it is. And look at Andretti go up and back in the fence. Pretty good damage to the rear of the Kmart Ford. But no caution, Andretti got the car fired and headed in the right direction, so the green remains out as Dale Earnhardt maintains his advantage over Terry Labonte. Here comes Dale Jarrett running third, then Ricky Rudd, and then there's some fluid reportedly oh, coming. Oh, oh and here's there. trouble at. Yeah, there is smoke coming out of Ricky Rudd's car. There's also trouble out in the inner loop. That's a right rear brake that Ricky Rudd's having trouble with. You can see the fluid building that's, up on Rusty's lens. That's brake fluid. Right, Bill Elliott? Looks like brake fluid uh, coming out around the hub on the right rear tire there. Uh, hopefully I'll notice that in a minute, because if you drive down one of these corners and lose the brake, you're going to have a heck of a ride. Yeah. With Bill, there was a lot of smoke the last time he came into the interlude here, so that might be when when something gave way uh, that uh, it shot that fluid out there, and now it, it continues to go. Jimmy Spencer, when I said there's trouble in the interlude, Jimmy Spencer spun over here, but he just made a 360 and kept getting. How do you differentiate between uh, brake fluid and water or something else, other liquid? Well, it, it, looking at that, it might be something like an axle seal or something like that, something getting on the right rear brake, but it's something that's isolated to that area, but he is losing a lot of fluid. It's like we'll have a problem here a little bit later on in the race. And more from Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, let's ask Danny Marshman, who calls the race for Ricky Rudd. Danny, what's leaking out there? We're seeing some smoke. Just a little bit of rear end grease out of rear end. He said he could smell it, but when it comes by, the back of the car is not getting dirty, so hopefully it's not too bad right now. Danny, we'll let you go. They're going to black flag him next time by. They're going to make him come in and have you guys take a look at it. So apparently, the rear end grease, a little bit of overflow. They said they may have it too full, but whatever. The Tide car will have to make a stop on pit road. So Rudd has been shown the black flag, and Mark Martin trying to make a move on Ernie Urban for sixth position and gets it. So Mark Martin. Ned, this car has been strong for the last three years, and the fourth year is no different, isn't it? No, it certainly isn't. That car knows its way around this racetrack, and certainly Mark Mark knows how to put, his, put that car in. Here's Dorsey Schrader making another move, passing Kenny Wallace in the car number 81. He's been following him for about five laps. Now moves around him. Jimmy Spencer and Robert Presley also moving up. I know during the break we talked about Jimmy Spencer had gained a lot of positions, Bob, had moved up through there, but uh, then he's fun in the interloop. I don't know how much, how many positions that might have cost him. There is Spencer just ahead of Dorsey. We might mention that Dorsey won the Trans Am race here yesterday on this racetrack, and he is currently the leader in the Trans Am series. I'm sure that's one of the reasons Bill Elliott chose him to get into this Donald's story. Well, I chose him before yesterday. <laughs> well, I know, but you know, right. you know his road racing experience is what I mean. <laughs> that's right, man. He's done an excellent job, I'll tell you. He's a good, real good guy, too. Yeah, he is. He's worked with us a lot on our broadcast from various uh, locations. And uh, good broadcaster, good driver. Bill Weber has a report from Pit Road. Well, Bobby Hamilton's back in. He came in a lap ago to fix the left side sheet metal, put new tires on the car and fuel in it. He went around, called in, said his motor just quit. So they've got the hood up on the STP Pontiac. They're talking it over. Bobby sits in the car, but the car not running, and Bobby Hamilton sits on pit road, very disappointed. Showing new colors on that car uh, this week. And, uh... Look at the garage, my brother. 
He just quit. He's thinking maybe it broke a timing chain or a camshaft, I think is what they're talking about. Yeah, that's the petty blue of old. Yep. Back in the early 70s, late 60s, there's a battle for what? Four spot? Rusty Wallace running fourth, Mark Martin fifth. Remember, Rusty has a lot of buildup on his windshield because he was following Ricky Rudd, so he's asked for another man over the wall on his pit stop that he can come by and uh, clean the windshield. Here, meanwhile, is Rudd heating the black flag and coming toward his pit. Jerry? Well, Bob, 35 miles an hour, that's the speed. It must seem like an eternity for Ricky Rudd. That's 4,000 RPM in first gear, I'm told, as he brings the tide forward down pit road. They have the jack stands, Danny Marshman and company go to work on the outside side the left side of the car it will change left side tires they will take the left rear car off take a look underneath the car thus far nascar looking beneath the rear of the car one official on his knees now another one on his knees looking beneath the rear of the car marshman has said they thought it was an overflow problem possibly overfilling the rear end tank it's a brand new race car they remember they had a brake problem on friday they changed all four tires and he is down and away and now nascar will talk to danny marshman that is alan bryce and the nascar official saying Bring him back in. Bring him back in. We didn't get a look. He does have something leaking out, according to NASCAR, so they're going to discuss it. We'll find out what they say and get back to you, Bob. All right. So Ricky Rudd having problems here in the early going of the Bud at the Glen. 23 laps completed, and the lead continues to be held by Dale Earnhardt. in Watkins Glen International in New York for the Bud of the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race. We're 24 laps into this event, and here is a Fram Field summary showing you where everybody is running at the moment. The numbers in parentheses on the right indicate their starting position. Dale Earnhardt has been at the front since the drop of the green flag. Look, Wally Ballenbach has moved from 31st to 16th. Sterling Marlin has moved up about 10 positions. Morgan Shepard has gained about 20. Look at Morgan Shepard. Once again, his car will run well in racing conditions. Does not qualify well. And 31st through 39th. The 77 car of Bobby Hill is shown there in 34th position at the moment is on pit road with a hood up. And the battle is between... Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin. That's Ricky Craven, the Kodiak car that is a lap down back in 37th spot. Here's the roof cam on Mark Martin. Tough break for Mark Martin because he caught Ricky Craven at the worst possible spot going down in turn one. Not able to get by. Ned, he really needs to get by him going into turn five and six. Yeah, because you can lose a lot of time following a car. Ricky's car not up to speed here today the way that he would like for it to be. And Mark uh, now... Craven does as he comes into the interloop, lets him by, and so that opens him up to go back up there after Rusty Wallace now. Ricky Rudd is still out there, Jerry. Is he going to come back in? Bob, let's find out from Danny Marshburn. Danny, what was the problem in Will NASCAR to let you stay out? Yeah, everything's going to be fine right now. He just got a little bit too much rear end grease in it and went around the hard right hander to just blow a little bit of rear end grease out. The NASCAR official on the back stretch looked at it again. They said everything looks okay right now. So it was coming out the vent over the overflow vent for the rear end. Yeah, exactly. It's just pushing. When it's got too much, it'll get pressure and it'll just push whatever it don't want out of the vent. Well, that's good news for Ricky Rudd. They're not going to bring him back in. He stayed out. And apparently, the smoke is now ceasing on the car, but he's lost some time. And Jimmy Spencer is fun again, Bob, over here in the interloop. The car number, I think it was Brett Bodine that came through the interloop, but he waited for other, I mean, came straight through there uh, and not making the interloop, but he waited for those to pass him back that he passed, and that's okay. He was told in the driver's meeting, but that's the second time that Spencer has spun in the interloop here so far today. He's having a good run, and he's been especially good the last few races because Spencer has moved from 21st to 13th in the points since Dover, but he's using every inch of racetrack out there now. He sure is, and Rick Mass right now trying to get by Spencer. Almost got by him as Spencer was coming back on the racetrack. There we see the cars as they go down in turn one. They both turn into the corner. Spencer will maintain that spot. Hopefully, Rick hopes he'll be able to get a run on him on the back stretch after the S's and beat him down towards Ned Jarrett. John and 
Negretti with some damage there on the rear of the car after he spun in corner number 11, and he's being pursued by Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy looks like he's got a pretty good run off the yeses. He tries to get alongside. Coming into the inner loop, let's see. Nope, can't do it this time. Well, he did get by Andretti. Bobby Hillen yeah, is also right. there in the uh, mix, but remember Hillen has just made a pit stop that uh, lasted for two laps, so he's back in 37th, two laps down. Yeah, he did make that pass, Bob. I was looking at the, at the wrong car coming in there. Sorry about that. Dale Earnhardt's lead over Terry Labonte has moved up to two seconds. Not quite three over Dale Jarrett, almost eight over Rusty, and eight and a half over Mark Martin. Now the question has to become, will he complete the race? Is he going to stop on the pit stop? I think if he goes 30 laps, he has no choice but complete the race. Well, I see the problem you have is just like we talked about with Dorsey. If you get a situation to where you have to go to the back of the pack now, you just put yourself in possession of out of winning the race. That's what out of, exactly. Jerry Punch, what are they saying down in the Earnhardt pits? Well, Bill Elliott is exactly right, Bill. I mean, that's exactly what Dale Earnhardt told him this morning when they had a team meeting. Said, guys, if I'm going to get out, I need to be to be fair to the team. I need to get out of the first 10 laps and give David Green a chance to be able to get back up. You guys didn't work your pit strategy. We got time to work traffic. The track position is so important. If I run to the first pit stop, guys, I'm going to be here for 90 laps. I'm going to be here all day long. Pit stop now becoming the order of the day. We are at lap 28. We expect some of the other leaders to come in next time by. Jeff Gordon played that. Disappointing finish last week at Brickyard 400 coming down pit road. Now, he has been reporting that his car was tight on the left-hand turns and loose on the right-hand turns. They're going to make a slight air pressure adjustment. Now, Ray Abraham and the crew are going to work on the left side. They will make a chassis change on the right rear. You see the wrench going in the right side window. Now the crew coming around to the left side. We'll watch and see they put a fill of fuel fuel. NASCAR allowing an extra man over the wall to clean the windshield. Now one crank, about a crank and a half there on the right rear, and he is down and away in 20.2 seconds for the DuPont Chevrolet. Gives up a lot of track position, but of course uh, others are going to need pit stops before too very long. Dale Earnhardt leads Labonte, Jared Wallace, and Martin after 28 of 90 laps at Watkins Glen. And Watkins Glen International, our leader, Dale Earnhardt, on pit road for his first of what should be just two scheduled pit stops. Dale Jarrett followed him down pit road. Basically, now it's followed the leader, Earnhardt, at 35 miles an hour. There's Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin are all going to come in. Lap 30 was the magic lap, and folks, we are at lap 30. Expect a four-tire change. They will change the right side tires first on the Goodrich Chevrolet. Right behind him, Dale Jarrett getting the left side or outside tire change on his Ford Thunderbird, a quality care Ford, looking overhead from the Jarrett crew now on the inside. Likewise, now the Goodrich crew has gone to the outside. As more cars, there's Michael Waltrip coming down pit road. Earnhardt is down and away. Here is Jarrett and away. As other work continues on pit road, Greg Stump on the Earnhardt crew, a tad over 19.2 seconds. Mark Martin moving out of the pits as well. David Green is still standing by. Doesn't even have the helmet on. <laughs> but Dale Earnhardt is staying in the car, even after the first pit stop. So Terry Labonte, oh, there's a tire on pit road rolling across. All the cars have missed it so far. It comes to a rest. Terry Labonte is coming in the pits. Bill Weber. Kellogg Sport Flake Chevrolet on pit road. First, the chassis adjustment. It's a little pushy, Terry says. Four tires, the left sides are already on. They swing around to the right side and change two more tires. They get plenty of fuel in it. This is the same car Terry Labonte brought here for a test session and crashed. The only thing that's the same is his third wheel in the seat. He's back in the race. Now, the question is, how long is it going to take him to get down pit road and how... Where is he going to come out on the racetrack as compared to Dale Jarrett and Dale Earnhardt? Both Jarrett and Earnhardt were pitted down toward pit out, whereas Labonte was way up here toward turn number 11. Here comes both Earnhardt and Jarrett into turn number one as Terry Labonte tries to accelerate out of the pits. And it's going to be a pretty good race here toward the S's. And Earnhardt dives on the inside and takes the lead. He's not the leader because right now, the 94 car of Dorsey Schrader, the McDonald's car, 
still on the racetrack is the leader of the race. So Dorsey's going to pick up five bonus points for having led a race here at Watkins Glen, and we're riding with him. Boy, Bill, every turn of the wheel has to be so precise. Yeah, the bad thing about it is here you kind of charge the car out from under, and if you're not smooth, it, it can work through the, the inner loop back through turn five, come back this way, you'll get it out from under you. But they stopped uh, about five laps when the call, first caution came out. They went ahead and stopped, put on four tires and gas, so that's the reason they're still out right now. Yeah, he put it on lap four, and so this is uh, why he's able to stay out longer than anybody else. Still staying out there. Dorsey Schrader leading in the McDonald's Ford at the moment. And we see right behind the McDonald's car is Earnhardt, Labonte, Jarrett. second time this afternoon. As you see the uh, front runners moving by the reason for the caution flag, Robert Presley's stall car between turns 9 and 10. Now here comes Earnhardt around turn number 11. He will get the yellow flag, but he will do so as the leader of the race. Now watch as we have the whole field cross the line come out of corner number 11, and you can see where everybody is on the racetrack at the moment. See Musgrave, he in fact is in the fifth spot. Mark Martin is sixth. Todd Bodine and Kyle Pettis car is seventh. There we see Jeff Gordon, Bobby Hillen. Terry Labonte did get credit for leading a lap. I believe it was lap 31 yes. when Earnhardt came in, so he gets the five points. I agree with that. There comes Michael Walter and Kenny Schrader. Bobby Labonte. Jeff Burton, Jeff Bodine, there's Light Singer, the Cartoon Network car. Sterling Marlin, Johnny Benson. There comes the Spam Machine, Lake Speed, Morgan Shepard, Ward Burton, Wally Dolan back, Kenny Wallace, and there's the Dorsey Schrader car. Ricky Craven. Looks like Derek Coe behind Craven. Darrell Walter, Western Auto Car. Jimmy Spencer, John Andretti. My golly, he does know his cars, doesn't he, Bill? <laughs> this caution I don't think he made a mistake. <laughs> okay, let's take a break here under our second caution of the day. A huge crowd on hand to watch the Bud at the Glen.
Track Facts are brought to you by Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards for engine protection. Here's Jerry Punch. Bob, you often think about uh, the cars getting a lot of beatings at super speedways like Daytona, maybe even Darlington, uh, and some of the tracks for the high speed are. But really, most of the beating takes place on the smaller tracks, the short tracks like Bristol, Tennessee, or Martinsville, or even Richmond. And even at road courses, let me show you what can happen. Take a look. These are the arms that come off the sway bars that came off the Hayes mode of car number 15 of Wally Dollaback. Normally, the sway bar is the bar in the front of the car that helps stabilize the front end, allows the car to be able to sit very evenly and smoothly and transfer weight across the front. But look what happened here. This car broke both of these bars on the front of the car. That's one of the reasons Dolomac had so much trouble with the car being loose all weekend. Even trying to qualify in the second round, the car would not turn. It was very, very loose. They came in, took the brake ducts off, and suddenly saw there were fragments of this steel that were broken. And folks, this is 5 8 inch thick steel. And these are the bars that actually attach to the sway bar, and these attach to the frame from the sway bar. And so when a car goes to the corner and picks up that left front tire, it's this arm right here that picks up that tire. That's how much pressure is on it, and obviously these couldn't stand the pressure. Bob? All right, Benny's going to step over to the Telestrator now and show you exactly where these are here on our uh, camera it, underneath the car. That's the piece we're talking about, the piece that goes back that aluminum, that silver color piece we see, that is a sway bar arm that goes, there's a bar sits in front of the front cross member. That goes back and hooks to the lower control arm. And when the car goes in the corner and the right side goes down, that will literally jerk the left front off the ground, Bill. Really, it's an anti-sway bar. Anti-roll bar, yes. <laughs> there you go. Right. All right. We'll get it the technical term. <laughs> <laughs> All right, still under caution here at Watkins Glen because of Robert Presley's out of gas car back in a moment. Perfect timing, Green coming out at Watkins Glen, race back underway as Dale Earnhardt leads him down into turn number one. That's Labonte on the inside of the lap car of Rick Mass. Labonte in second spot, Dale Jarrett in third. Robert Presley was out of gas, that's the reason. And look at Nemechek go way off the track. He and Michael Waltrip almost made, almost made contact a time or two. But now Michael is hung in behind. And we see Schrader behind uh, the Michael Walker car, riding along with Kenny Schrader. Down the back stretch, call fourth gear, just for you, Ned. And head into the interloop here. Jeff Gordon tried to get on the inside of Rick Mass, couldn't quite make that pass as he came in there. Front four cars, front five cars are all in front of the left cars. Rick Mass, the only one of the left cars that's up there amongst them. Dave Marcus is running along there in the top ten, but he's a lap down as well as they head out of turn nine over towards turn ten. A couple of cars have gone to the garage area. Ricky Rudd has gone there, and so has Dick Trickle with the transmission problem. Well, Bill, I guess Ricky Rudd's problem was not brakes, but it was, in fact, rear end fluid coming out of the car. He lost all the fluid, and the gear burned up, is what I'm told. Evidently, it was more serious than what they had originally thought. Rusty Wallace trying to look on the inside of Jarrett. Walter gets by the Dave Marcus car. Well, that caution flag was a huge break for a lot of drivers who were running anywhere from 10 to 50 seconds behind the leader, so that let them get caught back up, gave them a much better track position, or at least in relation to the leaders. Dorsey Schrader was the leader of the race when the caution came out, or he was in the pits when the caution came out, and he has fallen into 20th position now. There are 30 cars still on the lead lap at this point, and 37 laps have been completed. We ride with the root cam of Rusty Wallace, who's fifth. On the back stretch, fourth gear. Now, actually, Bob, he's in fourth. Yes, he is. Yep. Field summary. Yeah, he's right behind Jared, who's third. We can hear him back off the throttle now. He nailed the accelerator as he go down the front stretch. Second gear. Chip, Rusty. <laughs> now he down shifts. up the hill now he'll 
will shift to fourth as he comes off turn three, turn four here. He's in fourth gear now. As hard as he can go up the back stretch towards Ned in turn five. After you get off turn one, is it uh, no breaking up through the S's down the back stretch? No breaking whatsoever. You can just about run flat out all the way up through the S's. If you got your car working well, that's a good place you can make time. Normally, when you get to the top of the hill and make that last left hander, sometimes the cars go a bit tight and you have to kind of squeeze out of it as the race goes on. But you normally go through there pretty well. And a lot of work in the rusty Rudd, uh, Ricky Rudd garage area. Bill? Uh, a very happy campers down here. They definitely burned up the rear end gear a moment ago, smoke billowing from beneath this car. So it was obviously leaking at the start of the race. Then, uh, you know, they brought it in, tried to fix it, and it, uh, they just burned up the rear end gear. Ricky's still sitting in the car. The window net's still up. He's not very happy. He's fifth in points. He's won here twice. These guys will work real hard, try and get him back out, get him some points. But this team continues to struggle. You know what was the first clue he burned the gear up, Bob? What's the, that? The, you know what the first clue was that he burned the gear? The fire extinguisher sitting under the car. <laughs> and Earnhardt, once again, out in front. You know, if he leads about six more laps, he will get the bonus points for leading the most laps. Yep. So if he had got out earlier, he'd have lost that. Yeah. So that's another valuable five points at the end of the year. I can't imagine as much pain as he is has to be in now riding around shifting and back and forth can you feel well you forget about the pain i mean that's one thing about it is uh you know once you get these race cars and strap yourself in you can be hurt pretty bad forget about that i was amazed though on friday when i watched your qualifying show i thought really that he would just perform well enough to get the car solidly in the field and uh, then go rest and that isn't what happened <laughs> Yeah, he did. <laughs> Real solidly. Real solid. <laughs> Letting the field go through and show you where your favorite driver is. Here's uh, Todd Bodine in substitution of uh, Kyle Petty. Trying to work on Wally Collin back. And where are they? About 23rd position. Todd ran second in the bush race here back in June. Terry Labonte had a real good run. Did a great job. He and Terry Labonte ran side by side through the interloop where you are, Ned. Yeah, that still amazes me that they were able to do that. But they had to be a little bit of give up there and not much take in that type of situation. Up ahead is Wally Dollenbach, who finished second here last year. He was driving the 22 car here last year. He's not a regular in the series, but... Uh, Turned it on for Watkins Glen. It's a rear bumper of Wally Dallenbach's Hayes car as he looks back at Todd Bodine. Felt like he spun out, didn't he? Felt like it. All right, Joe Nemechek and Ernie Urban now are battling for seventh position. Uh-oh, Nemechek, some smoke on his car. When he went down to turn one a while ago, I saw him dive under Ernie Urban in the car smoke. I guess there's just some other kind of problem. Be Jeff Gort closing on the back bumper of Mark Martin. Joe Nemechek led 26 of the first 51 laps of the Bush Grand National Race in June, though, so he's a pretty good road racer. Look at the damage on the four car. Yeah, I guess we can find somebody's rear bumper that uh, matches that nose piece on the four car. It's probably the seven. Yeah, something just happened to the 81 car. Uh, Kenny Wallace going down the front straightaway here. He went rolling into turn one. The way the Sterling Mullins car is hitting the nose, he might not be able to get a, enough air in the grill, the bottom grill, to keep the radiator cool, although it is a, a relatively cool day here in Watkins Glen. Temperature is probably in the high 70s. Sterling's best finish here at Watkins Glen was back in 1993. He finished sixth. Butch Leisinger and the uh, Cartoon Network car is behind. and 15th running first Dale Earnhardt and Rusty once again looking to the inside of Dale Jarrett but Jarrett holds him off yeah, he was almost there so we're nearing the halfway 
halfway point of this race, 42 laps of the 90 are complete. Earnhardt leads over Labonte, Jarrett, Wallace, and Martin. There's the interval, the lead that Dale Earnhardt has over Terry Labonte and the rest of the field. Whoa, did you see Rusty Wallace smoke? Oh, oh look corner. at Rusty slide through the grass. And he stopped, did not hit anything. Oh, I see what was smoking. That was tire smoke because he got sideways. Yep. Oh, man, cars in position just blind by him. More cars, more cars. That's going to be tough to make up, too, baby. Boy, that ends up all that track position. Tough situation for us. So he's going to lose about uh, a dozen, 13, maybe 14 positions with that little slide off course. You know, I think that's what's going to take its toll here later on in the race. The tires get hot, the brakes get warm. You know, people are really pushing the cars. And that was the, the one of the big reasons why I said, you know, for me just to sit here and not try to drive the car. When you get tired and you start making mistakes, then things start compounding on you. And track position is so critical here. Let's, Let's take a look at it again. Let me tell what happened to Rusty Wallace. This is from his camera. Let's listen. I think he just got in there a little bit too hard, Benny. Sound like he might have got the rear end, rear wheels hopping a little yeah. bit, too. Uh -huh. hit, hit, hit the brakes and got the rear wheels hopping. And, uh... But he avoided the tire and or styrofoam barriers that they have as the Miller crew watches the replay along with us. They know that Rusty is okay, but lost many, many positions on the racetrack. Bob on Friday, he might not have been able to get that thing stopped before he got to that tire barrier because that grass would have been wet. Yep. Because it rained all night on Thursday night and on Friday morning here. But uh, it's dried out a lot since then, so that helps to slow it down. Cross flags are being uh, displayed. We're halfway through this event. Dale Earnhardt, the leader at the halfway point. Let's take another look at this Rusty Wallace incident. There's Earnhardt going through the frame. There comes Labonte. Wow, that's the right front tire. I saw smoke. Left front. Left front tire, I'm sorry, as I saw smoke. And as he locked her up, trying to get it wooed. Please stop, baby. Stop, baby. Out of boy. Those are styrofoam barriers there that are in front of the tires, which are in front of the uh, of the uh, guardrail. Yeah, the white you see is styrofoam, and that'll take care of a lot of the energy when the cars get in there. Something new here at Watkins Glen this uh, year. They have them down near turn number 10 and also down by turn number 1. Well, see, Earnhardt's getting tired because he's holding up a little bit on the body now. <laughs> yeah, he's about wore out. <laughs> He's wore the field out. Yeah, he is. And he goes by, leaves another lap. I think he's made it up now, Benny, that he can, uh, he sewed up that most laps led. Or at least if he leaves one more lap, he should be in that position, so that's five more bonus points. I believe that's correct, Ned. He has to leave one more lap to sew up those five bonus points. There we see Schrader diving on the inside of Rick Mass. Down in turn one. Takes the spot away. Rick Mast in the Hooters car is a lap down. The last time Rick Mast led a NASCAR Winston Cup race was on a road course at Sears Point earlier this year. comes Bobby Labonte down towards you, man. Bobby, they did a lot of work on that Interstate Batteries car this morning. Jimmy Maycar told me to change the sway bar and a, and a couple of springs and the motor and a few things. And, uh, got it going pretty good here today. Running 10th right now. Grandfield summary again. Earnhardt about to lock up the five bonus points for the off the pace on the front straightaway. The Havlin Texaco car came off turn 11, slowed, and we see Nemechek and Michael Walter get in by. Boy, he has had a hot streak going. He has earned more points in the last six races than any driver in NASCAR Houston Cup racing. He has a 3.5 average finish in the last six races. Six straight top five finishes and jumped from 16th to 7th in the points. Now looks like the car's going again. Yep. I don't know, 
know. Maybe he had an ignition problem and he changed boxes and the car's going. I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to find out from the crew what he's saying. Could be transmission, you know, maybe having just a higher gear. Jerry Punch? Larry, what happened? The car suddenly slowed. Yeah, we lost third gear. We got second, fourth gear, of course. Third gear is your primary gear here, so we're just glad to have him watch his RPM, watch his temperature, and uh, see what happens here. You know, we had transmission trouble at Sears Point. We had another transmission failure yesterday, so uh, we've got to figure out what's causing it. Boy, this race has got that much tougher for Ernie Irvin. Now the road course is even tougher with no third gear. And you see him going in that right-hander. He needed third gear. He needed to downshift there for third gear. Well, I saw the car wiggle a little bit, which meant he got in the corner a little bit harder than he wanted to. So another thing's going to be harder on brakes, too, getting it all woke down. Now you need to sign Bill Elliott up. He called that. That's lady. right. Good job. Lucky shot. <laughs> Ernie Irvin, the winner here at Watkins Glen back in 1991. He has two victories at Sears Point in 92 and 94. Up front, they remain basically the same as Earnhardt, Labonte, Jarrett, Martin, and Gordon. 48 out of 90 laps have been completed. Stop number 20 on the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, ESPN's presentation of the Bud at the Glen. And it's being brought to you by the more than 1,350 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. By Craftsman, a line of 2,200 hand tools made in America, guaranteed forever, only at Sears. And by the all-new Ford F-150, strength after strength after strength. Five o'clock today on ESPN, the 1996 Great American Insurance Championship ATP Tour. It's the final match, and you'll see it today at five o'clock here on ESPN. Is Mooster still playing, Bob? Mooster is not playing. Oh. Andre Agassi beat him, and so it's Agassi and Michael Chang in the final match this afternoon. Tomas Mooster, unfortunately, did not win yesterday. Looks like Terry Labonte might be close enough to the first bit on Dale Earnhardt. But Earnhardt has clinched the five bonus points for leading the most laps. So he goes out of here with uh, a bonus of ten points this afternoon. I wonder if the pain right now is just getting unbearable and Earnhardt saying, okay, I've got all the bonus points that I can get. I think I ought to fall back and run about fifth or sixth and just relax a little bit. Now he, he wants to win the race. <laughs> what do you think, Ned? I, I agree with Bill. I think he wants to win the race. I don't think that he's going he's gonna to push it that hard to be able to do it. As hard maybe as he's been pushing it, but I think that he, he has an awfully good race car out there, and I think he's going to drive that thing just as hard as he needs to to keep those guys at bay. No question that Terry Labonte is closer than he has been in a while. Dale Jarrett is not too far behind as they enter the inner loop once again on the 52nd lap. See Hus Strickland back out there. He's 44 laps down. But you know, looking at what Rusty's little deal over here, little spin, it really put him in a bad position. You know, that's that's the thing about what how critical track position is and what the interval is from, from where he's running right now to the leader on. Right now, Rusty Wallace back in 15th spot was running second. Meanwhile, we're on board with Kenny Schrader. There's the 18 car, 99 car. Pretty good race in front of you, Ned. Yeah, there's a lot of good cars that are running. Uh, Schrader, like you said, the 18, the 99, the 7 car of Jeff Ludine, Morgan Shepard, Sterling Wallace, Rusty Wallace. A lot of cars running very close together there for position, and here's Bobby Labonte. He wants a position. And he takes ninth. Bobby Labonte goes into ninth, and Ernie Irvin is smoking badly coming off of corner number 11. No, he's blowed up. That's what he is. Now nah, he's still running. Barely. Well, you wonder if he might have overread it there. My friend just said they had to be careful. Looks like he's losing fluid right there. And there's a crash as Rusty Wallace has gone into the tire barrier in turn number 11. And the car is hung up on the curb. The rear wheels are not on the ground. He cannot back it up. The car is high centered. Could it have been from uh, the fluid from Ernie Irvin's car? Well, who knows? Could have been. But who knows? In any case, Rusty Wallace's problems now are compounded. He lost track position earlier, and there's still some fluid coming out of that 28 car. Yeah, he's smoking heavily as he comes into the inner loop here, Bob. So we have a third overall caution. Jerry Punch has more. 
Well, Rusty just told the crew I got in something coming out of the 28 car, and I came in a corner, and it wasn't even about to turn. I just skated right into the wall. So I said something just came suddenly gushing out of the 28 car, and I happened to be the one that found it. Fortunately, Rusty is right by the pit entrance, so he easily is going to be able to get in. Let's listen. to pit road but there's a lot of damage on the left front of the Miller Ford. Ernie Irvin has gone behind the wall. Meanwhile, a couple of cars, Ricky Rudd and Hutt Strickland have gone back on the racetrack after many laps in their respective garage areas. So the Miller crew now trying to salvage the two car Rusty Wallace into the tire barrier in turn 11 on lap 53 here at the Bud at the Glen. We are under caution here at Watkins Glen. Rusty Wallace nosed into the tire barrier, turn number 11. They've got the hacksaws and all other kinds of equipment out as a Rusty sits and waits until he can get the car back out there. Here is Ernie Irvin coming through corner number 11, and this was just ahead of Rusty Wallace. But there's several cars between Ernie and Rusty. There see several cars coming through, and then all of a sudden Rusty just, boom. Oh, mm, man, man. Oh, man some heavy contact and now a lot of pit stops are being made here's bill weber terry labonte chevrolet is just a little loose they've made a tire pressure adjustment they're going to do a four tire change here and put all the fuel they can and they cannot cannot go the distance this team is rooting for cloud cover terry says his car would be better if the skies were totally overcast he's on his way down pit road headed toward jerry punch and dale earnhardt's pit well, a full pit road, if you look up pit road, Earnhardt's crew changing right side tires, and likewise, Bill Weber, they cannot make it all the way. By calculations with David Smith, they can run 34 laps to put them in lap 88, which means they will run out of gas two laps to the end. Likewise, Jeff Gordon will run out two laps early as Earnhardt, and now Husker from Terry Labonte. Here is Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Dale Jarrett, and they all shuffle back to turn one. And Dale Jarrett evidently had some trouble on that pit stop because... And those guys are high-fiving, congratulating each other. There we see Don Hogson. Out of five. Way to do it. And so, Bill, basically the pit strategy that everybody thought of earlier is out the window because of this caution. Totally. You know, everybody was going to try to run to 30 laps, then lap 60, then didn't be able to go to the end of the race. But now, with this in the deal, it's going to take a totally different turn for the end of the race. It looks like a splash of gas with five or six laps to go now. If anybody can do the win, uh, they'll win the race. Well, and Terry Labonte is historic of this season ran longer than anyone else on fuel and they said they positively cannot make it so if he can't make it I would think that no one can make it Bill Elliott has to go thank you so much for being here great Thanks, job guys. appreciate and, uh, you having me we'll see you at Michigan next week in the car I hope I'll be in the car next week for sorry right. get better boy thanks guys Bill Elliott uh, has joined us for the first 54 laps of this race. Caution out, they're working up at turn number 11. We'll take a look at it once again from the onboard camera, the roof cam, as Rusty came through corner number 10, saw the smoke up ahead, and got the tire barrier in corner 11. I mean, he started to get back on the gasoline, so there was something there that, that Rusty hit. They're still working on the car on pit road. We'll be back to Watkins Glen in a moment. Still under caution here at Watkins Glen International, the butt of the Glen. 55 out of 90 laps have been completed. We're under the caution because of a crash involving Rusty Wallace. Just check on how the crew is doing. Here's Jerry. Well, Robin Pemberton, Billy Wilburn, and the crew are trying to work on what's left of Killer. That's the nickname for this Miller Ford Thunderbird that killed him out in Sonoma. But right now, the car has got a huge problem in the front end. The chassis, a part of the front frame section has been bent. The wheels are towed out big time. 
in the front. Uh, now, Rusty told the crew a moment ago after the accident, and I was just checking with him to make sure they heard what we heard. Rusty said, I think I hit some fluid out of the 28 car, but uh, as NASCAR has checked, it didn't see anything on the racetrack, and you got to wonder, maybe something broke in the front of the car, and Rusty just began to skate abruptly head on into the wall, and that may be why the front end is so heavily damaged. Anyway, he still sits here. They're trying to get the car fixed. As we go back and check in with Bill Weber, I think he's standing by near the Ernie Urban car. And Jerry standing here with Ernie, who's a previous winner here. Obviously, you're the hottest guy on the circuit. This is disappointing, Ernie. What happened? I was the hottest guy because this transmission was smoking real bad. <laughs> you know, it got real hot. And, you know, we lost third gear first. And I uh, started learning how to drive it without third gear. And um, you know, then all of a sudden, something else broke in it. So um, just I, I'm the second transmission I broke this year. And I uh, never broke any before. So doing something wrong. These road courses are tough, aren't they? Oh, they are. You know, this guy's these guys built a brand new car here. And I mean, it was really good. And this Texaco Avalon Ford was... Uh, I think it was performing fairly well. I don't know if we were going to be able to win the race, but, you know, we were right there and, um, with the lap speeds we needed. Hey, Bill. Okay, they're working on his car to get him back out, get some points. Hey, Bill. Yes, Benny. Tell Ernie that he needs to have Robert detune that Yates motor a little bit. All that horsepower, bad on the heart, on the powertrain. <laughs> I'll pass that along to him. All right, thanks. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Well, guys, the crew chiefs down here of all the lead cars almost a moment ago said in unison, it was like they all keyed their radios at the same time and said two words, conserve fuel. That seems to be the uh, <laughs> magic word right now, conserve. But then we see Jeff Bodine is leading. The, oh, I'm sorry. Let's look at this on the AutoZone off-track time stop. Gordon picked up a position in the pits, and we talk so often about how important track position is, and you can get it or lose it in the pits. That's right, and Dale Jarrett went in the pits running in the third, I guess third spot, and now he's, what, six, then? Yeah, he's in sixth place. Of course, as you mentioned, Jeff Bodine didn't stop, but Bobby Labonte made a great pit stop. He gained a lot, too, but you can see what the difference was on Jarrett and uh, Gordon there. And well, Dale Jarrett had a better time the last on his other stop mm -hmm. at 48.9, so this time he was just a couple of seconds slow, but that was four spots on the racetrack. That is correct. Jeff Bodine did not pit, so he is at the front of the field as the lights atop the pace car are out, so we should be going back to racing here in just a moment. And we see Bobby Labonte back there. He was eighth before this round of pit stops. Now he is in four spots. So his crew, Jimmy Makar and the crew, picked up four spots in the pits. Great job. Well, we showed you a field summary when there were 57 laps to go. Now we're approaching the 57 laps completed mark. And so our Heinz 57 field summary is on the screen for you, showing that 20, uh, what, seven cars are on the lead lap with Rick Mast to lap down in 28th. And Dick Trickle, the only car officially listed as out of the race at the moment, although there are a few back in the garage area. Pace car pulls ahead. Field comes through corner number 11, where the trouble was with Rusty Wallace. And the green flag waves were back to racing at the bud at the Glen. And looks like that uh, Jeff Gordon looking to the inside of Bobby Labonte trying to pick up fourth spot. And he does it. Coming into turn one. Motors right on by on the inside. Now we see Dale Jarrett trying to get by Labonte. I didn't either, Ned. And Mark Marsh trying to do the same thing. You gotta have a nice guy like Bobby Labonte there beside him to be able to do that. So Jarrett moves into fifth position. He's only had one top five finish on a road course. That was here in 1991. There's Ken Schrader and Michael Walter and Jeff Burton. All of those cars on the lead lap. Michael Waltrip having a good day as we look back on his car. He's running in ninth, in ninth position. And trying to pass Rusty, or rather, Ken Schrader here. He's alongside, but he's going to be in a tough spot when he gets to turn 11. And being out on that outside, but he made it. Yep. Oh, Labonte just ran in the grass. He sure did. He got way off in the grass, and there are four abreast coming down through here there into turn one. They better start fumbling. Pretty doggone quick. Whoa, Burton on the inside. Passes Waltrip, and uh-oh, we got a spin. That's Warren Burton. Doing a half spin, at least. Everybody else is going to be able to uh, get around it okay. Didn't hit anything before. There goes that touch position. That is really costly. He was in 12th 
position when he crossed the line on that lap, but now loses a lot of track position. Here it is again. Let's take a look as they all come down in the corner. There he is, the black car, right in the middle of the screen as he smokes the brakes, trying to get down in the corner. And his angle getting in the corner was so bad, he just not able to make that turn. And we we could see the black mark as he smoked the tires with the brakes, trying to get in the corner, trying to get slowed for the corner. Jeff Bodine's UBC car still leading Dale Earnhardt. So how many ever cars are in the lead left? That's where Ward Burton is running now, Bob. What would you say, 23 cars on the lead left? Uh, 27. 27, okay. Yep. Well, that's, that's where he's slipped back to. Now let's talk about the strategy that Jeff Bodine is employing here. He did not make a stop when the caution came out for Rusty Wallace elected to stay out. He's picking up bonus points, but he's probably got some uh, further thoughts regarding uh, the later part of the race. I would guess, uh, Bob, that he stayed out there, and he's just going to make his two pit stops that everybody knew that he could go the whole distance, making two pit stops, and then he'll come in under the green. You can pit and not lose the lap under the green, and then hope to get back out there, hope the caution comes out, and everybody else will have to go in the pits and uh, top off their fuel at least, and that will put him back up front again. An update from uh, Jerry Punch, who's with Rusty. Well, behind the wall in the Miller Ford Thunderbird, Rusty still sits in the car. Rusty, what happened out there? A wild ride for you. Yeah, I just went into turn 10 there, or turn 11, and uh, evidently the 28 dropped a bunch of oil, and I hit it. I didn't see it hit it. just went flying off the course right there. There's no steering when I hit that stuff. He had a close call a few left to go back in turn 10. Yeah, the car was really flying. I put, uh, we made that last pitch stop, put four tires on. I was trying to get around uh, the car in front of me there and just got in the corner too hot. Locked the front wheels up and slid off the course. Just going to have to run on a pit stop, a good fashion to get back up the front, which I thought we could have, but, uh, man, I didn't encounter that oil out there. Didn't that one. Robin Pemberton and the crew working on the front of the Miller Ford Thunderbird. Rusty currently sixth in the point standings, and this uh, period behind the wall is going to cost him dearly in that battle. Winner here in 1987 and 89, Rusty Wallace still waiting to get back out there after a crash in turn number 11. Jeff Bodine continues to lead the butt at the Glen here over Dale Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, Jeff Gordon, and Dale Jarrett. 59 laps complete. Welcome back to Watkins Glen International for the butt of the Glen. And tonight at 8 o'clock, Sunday night baseball's game of the week is the Rockies and the Braves. Braves led by Chipper Jones is hitting 309, 22 homers, 80 RBIs. Rockies led by Dante Bichette, who's hitting 325, 21 homers and 97 RBIs. 8 o'clock tonight, Rockies and Braves. It's the ESPN Sunday night baseball game of the week. Still the first three, four, five were in the same oh! position, but Jeff Gordon has a problem. I think he made some contact with his teammate of Terry Labonte going down in turn one the last lap and has damaged the left front fender. He lost two positions in trying to take second, third away from Labonte and has suffered maybe even more than that. There we see him get down in the corner and looks like they did make contact. He gets off the gas. Jarrett goes by and Mark Martin goes by. So we'll keep an eye on Jeff's 24 car and see if there is evidence that the bodywork is pushed in on the tire. He cut a tire, of course, at Indianapolis and uh, had a very hard visitation with the retaining wall. Here's Wally Dahlenbach, who's come in for a pit stop, a splash and go. He was running in 19th position when he came in. So now he can run the rest of the day, the rest of the way. And if a caution should come out and everybody else come in, they're putting him right back up towards the front. That's a good strategy. If we'll he knows he's going to have to stop in anyway. In the interest of the chicane, Craig, with 41 car low, smoked the motor in the interest of the chicane. Ned, yeah. did the 41 blow up? Yeah, yeah I think he did. You can see left, there, right there's uh, oil on smoke left. coming from his car. And I don't know if this might bring a caution. don't know. He's coasting. I don't think he can coast all the way back to the garage here. I just don't think he can get that far. Jeff Bodine comes in for a pit stop. Does the caution come out? No. Well, that's good, good, smart strategy on Jeff Bodine's part. That's right. That, that a caution will come out. Yep. And see, now he's not making a pit stop under the That is great strategy. Bill Weber. Well, this was their fuel window. After the last caution, they thought they could go five more laps. Then they'd bring Jeff in. His crew chief, Paul Andrews, told me they don't believe anybody else can go the distance. They did right side tires first. Now swing around to the left side. They'll get every ounce of gasoline they can 
into his QVC Ford. Jeff sits there, grabbing the motor, waiting to go. He clapped the jack, and Jeff's on his way. He can reach the finish. So can Wally Gollaback. Who else? This could be very interesting. It could, because, Ned, you're right, that 41 car can never get back. No, I don't think he'll make it back. I think he's coasting still very slowly, so I think there's going to... He's approaching turn number 10. There he is coming out of nine up there at the top of your screen is where Ned is. And this car is not going to make it all the way around. However, we still do not see a full force caution. We saw the corner workers there saying yellow. And now we do. The caution comes out here at the start finish line. Overall caution on lap number 63. Boy, Bodine in a home run, didn't he, Ned? Yes, he did. I'll tell you, that's what you want to do on the road course is make a pit stop and have the caution come out while you're in the pits. Can't beat that. Interesting situation as Ricky Craven's stalled car has caused our third overall caution here at Watkins Glen International. car has picked up the field and uh, Rusty Wallace appears to be headed back for the racetrack. They've got necessary repairs made to the Miller Ford and Rusty about to go back out there. He lost 10 laps. Dale Jarrett has been closing the gap as far as the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship is concerned recently. He was 212 points behind the leader following Loudon and has closed it down to within 63. And he is currently third in the point standings. His win last week at the Brickyard 400 has made him our True Value Man of the Race for the Brickyard 400. True Value will donate $1,000 on behalf of Dale to Brenner's Children's Hospital, a favorite beneficiary of many NASCAR drivers. And Dale contributes to many charities, including two special projects at Newton Conover Middle School. He completely funded the Dale Jar Jarrett Wellness Room, which provides athletic training equipment for students and faculty. And he annually awards the Dale Jarrett Determination Award to two eighth graders, one girl, and one boy. So there's the story of the man of the race last week at the Brickyard 400. Now we're going to see some pit stops. Peter. Are we? Well, what are we going to see pit stops? I mean, right now, Wally Dolan back pitted. He can go the rest of the way. He would be the leader if they all pit. Jeff Bodine, we know he can go the rest of the way with four fresh tires. But these guys, I think, are going to have to have some gasoline. Will they do it now? Looks like they are. Are they faking each other out? No, I don't think so, no. Dale Earnhardt comes in, Terry Labonte comes in, and so do several others. Dale Jarrett, let's go to Bill Weber. Terry Labonte is in. Fuel only. They make it back up just a little bit. They pop it off. Terry's on his way. Fuel only for the five. But Labonte has to come through all that traffic. He's pitting up near at the entrance of the pit, but he had to slow down for that traffic. Let's go back to the pits. Earnhardt stops at the far end of pit road. Jared is down here. Gordon is down here. Gas only for Earnhardt. He is down in the way. Mark Martin is out. Here is Gordon out. Jared. And they will follow Terry Labonte. As Terry Labonte beat them all as they head down to turn one. But they've got to fall in behind all the cars on the racetrack. All those cars on the track have got to go by. He's got to fall in behind Rusty Wallace. They can't blend in like that. Yep. They are, but uh, they shouldn't be. Everybody that stayed out on the track should be positioned ahead of those who uh, came in. That's right. I mean, Jeff Bodine and the and the 15 car. Well, I mean, Nastro will get this straight now. <laughs> you can bet that one. Yeah. <laughs> but now you see Bobby Labonte did not stop. He has been known for getting very, very good gas mileage. And uh, so he's up ahead of the pack. Ken Schrader didn't stop as well. Which Lossinger. So going to be interesting. So Bobby Labonte is shown at the, as the leader at the moment under this caution. 64 laps completed. You're watching live coverage of the Bud at the Glen from Watkins Glen, New York. under caution here at Watkins Glen because of Ricky or rather yeah Ricky Craven's stalled car should be going back green before too much longer we have had several cars that came in for a pit stop but they may have been in violation or some of them may have been in violation well they've sorted them they've already sorted themselves out because Wally Dahlenbach and Jeff Bodine are faster but that's Jimmy Cox a stop and go man that's him there as these cars are coming off pit road you'll see 
the, the sign that he, the green sign that he's holding, that says go. The other side of that says stop. Uh -huh. Uh huh. And that's what those drivers are seeing as they go by pit road. But they continue going on because they're all trying to establish who's going to be in front of who. But they now have fallen behind the cars that were on the racetrack. Terry Labonte's crew, interestingly, looking on to... Uh, <laughs> we see Bob Labonte right in the middle. So there we see Labonte now is behind Jeff Bodine. And if new tires are worth anything, Bodine has them, and these other cars don't have them. Mm -hmm. did not stop, and uh, they're now ahead of Terry Labonte. Here's Bill Weber. Okay, a couple guys down here at this end of pit road near the final turn on this road course believe they can make it. The 18, Bobby Labonte, I talked to his crew chief, Jimmy Makar. He said, I believe we could have made it even if it stayed green. This caution will help us. I'm sure we can reach the finish. The 29 crew, the Cartoon Network Chevrolet, with veteran road racer Butch Lightsinger in that car, they've had a great day. One slow pit stop, but Butch has made up positions on the track. They also believe they can go the distance. They did not come in under this most recent caution. They stopped earlier. So the 18, the 29, of course the 7, believe they can all reach the finish. Hey, Bill, you know what is going to happen? What? We're going to have a caution flag, so we'll have a great race when one of these cars run out of gas and can't make it back to pit road. <laughs> How do you feel when that happens, Benny? Ah. <laughs> Man, it's going to be a sad, sad day. Rusty Wallace back in, He's checking sad. the toe in. All right, let's take another break before we have the green flag come out once again. As up front, it is Bobby Labonte. Hi, this is Alan Bestwick. Join me right after the race for NASCAR Shop Talk. Mark Martin will be here. How do we do this? Get you out here during the race. Got some great Mark Martin and NASCAR merchandise for you. We'll talk all about racing with Mark on NASCAR Shop Talk. Stay with us after the race. Alan and Mark will be here as soon as we conclude our coverage of this event. Right now, Mark Martin running in 13th position. By the way, there were 10 cars that did not come in for a pit stop, and so they are positioned ahead now of those who were running up front before the caution. You're right, right now, Bobby Labonte is the leader, Kenny Schrader, Bush Light Singer, Todd Bodine, Brett Bodine, Ward Burton, remember he spun a moment ago? He is now running in sixth spot. Johnny Benson has stayed out there. Wally Dolan back. And Jeff Bodine in front of our previous leader, leaders, Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt. Here's another AutoZone off-track time for Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt. Their third pit stop, which came on lap 63. Uh, that over two-second faster pit stop for Labonte than Earnhardt caused him to gain a position on the racetrack. Where you see next stop, there will not be a next stop. By the way, this is the first time in his career that Bobby Labonte, our current leader, has been at the front on a road course. Here's Jerry Punch. Well, guys, current Bush Senior Series point leader David Green was supposed to be a relief driver, David. Uh, and uh, I got what I tell you this morning. <laughs> Jerry, you told me I, I was going to have the day off and relax a little bit, but, uh, you know, I tell you what, Dale Earnhardt is something else, and uh, I've just, this has been an unbelievable weekend for me, a lot of experience. Hopefully, if I could have helped him out a little bit in practice like we did, this is going to get him to what we've seen so far today. That man's unbelievable, but this race team has done a way of a job. They didn't know which driver was going to drive, how long which one was going to drive, so my hats are off to all these good race team members, and uh, again, to Dale Earnhardt, he drove a way of a race, and uh, like you said, you were right. I got today off, uh, but we didn't know that. Hey, now your first clue, though, came on the pace lap. Tell the folks at home what Earnhardt did. Well, Ron Hornaday's here. He's never been to Watkins Glen, and they're going to run the trucks in a couple weeks, and he rode in a pace car with Elmo. So uh, Ron got over here, and he told me that Earnhardt pulled up beside of him and said, I'm going to drive all the way. So uh, at that point, we didn't know what was going to happen. But, you know, he's a racer, and uh, these guys are in it for the championship, and they got a well of a race car. I drove it a little bit, but... 
um, that race car drove me instead of me driving it. It's an awesome piece, and uh, Dale deserves to be in there, and he's doing a well of a job. Hey, quite a compliment to you that they picked you to drive the car. And by the way, you're looking awful dapper in your good wrench uniform here. But uh, next week at Michigan, back to uh, back to the uh, Caterpillar team. Right, and you know, I want to thank all those guys. Those guys that gave me a break to to get good on all these racetracks, and thanks to them, they've showcased my name a little bit. But uh, you know, thanks to Richard Childers, all these guys, Bobby Hutch and David Smith. These guys been over backwards just like I was Dale Earnhardt, and Dale has been also. He's been really, really good. David Green, sort of like the Maytag repairman today. Awful lonely here in the pits, and that's where he'll stay until they wave the checkered flag. Bob? We'll have coverage of the BGN and Winston Cup race from Michigan next week. Well, it was the Dale and Dale show. We've seen it many times in Winston Cup competition. That's the way it was when it started today with Earnhardt on the pole and Jarrett alongside in row number one. will come out momentarily in the field being led by the pace car through corner number 10. Todd Bodine in the 42 car ahead of Brett Bodine in the 11. They're running fourth and fifth. And the guys trying to find a winch cup ride for 1997. And Butch Leitzinger is in the 29 car in Virginia car that Greg Sachs has been driving recently, but they called on the road racing expert Butch Leitzinger here this weekend. The green flag comes out. We're back to racing. Bobby Labonte, Ken Schrader, and Schrader may be making a move in one. Yep, and there we see Jeff Bodine trying to get on the inside of Andretti. Schrader makes the move. He gets by. Bodine is able to get by. Boy, this is the type of situation, guys, that you... That Spells trouble. Maybe everybody will be able to do it. You got uh, some faster cars back in the middle of the pack, and uh, some cars that run good, but not as fast as those up front had been running. So they're going to scramble to try to get back up there. And that crowd is going wild. Yeah, sure are. Ken Schrader has the lead, but oh, they're three wide in the inner loop, Ned. Boy, you can't do that. They did get down to single file. I don't know how they did that, Bob, but uh, they were smart to do it. Could this be the day for the Budweiser sponsored car, the Bud of the Glen? There's John Andretti getting pushed into the outer lane and passed. We look back from Schrader's car to the Bobby Labonte machine running second. That Kenny Schrader stopped on lap 55. 55. That means he's got to run 35 laps on this racetrack. That, folks, is an awfully long ways to go. several car lengths in front of him, but when Leitzinger spun, I think Labonte stood on the brakes trying to avoid him, and that left Earnhardt catch right back up to him. I was going to say that Ken Schrader hasn't been in victory lane in a NASCAR Winston Cup race since Dover in 1991. Here's a replay of the action in turn one. He's on the inside of Bobby Labonte as Leitzinger goes down the corner, and when he sees it, lights it that by Labonte... Labonte is going to come across down to the inside. He tries to slam on the brake and spins himself out. Jeff Bodine picked up another spot. So he's up to fifth place now. And here is who? Dolan back over to the inside of Ward Burton. Yes, he is. That position. And here come Labonte and Earnhardt. Ward Burton right behind Wally Dolan back there we see they've been able to get by Johnny Benson has Labonte and Earnhardt. Mark Martin gets by. There's our leader, Kenny Schrader, the bus car. Bodine and Bodine and Bodine. Bodines are running, uh, what, third, fourth, and fifth. Well, they're having a great day. Look at this scrambling going on. Johnny Benson staying to the side. Cars getting by. Michael Walker now trying to get by. Ooh, they get awfully close. <laughs> it was awfully close, Ned. Kenny Schrader leads them into the interloop here. Bobby Labonte second. Yeah, the button. 
Schrader, of course, driving the Budweiser car and the Budweiser race recap shows that he has led only one of the 68 laps, but still in the lead. He's had seven lead changes, four caution periods, totaling 11 laps, and a little over 86 miles an hour at the average speed. Here's a look at those who have led at least one lap here in this event, and Earnhardt has picked up the five extra bonus points for leading the most laps. And as far as the cars out of the race concerned, only two, Dick Triple and Ricky Craig. And the car that's on the move right now, I believe, is Jeff Bodine. He's between his brothers, Brett and Todd, able to get by Todd. Up in front of Ned, uh, last time when he lived. Yeah, he, he made the pass coming into the, uh, the interloop there. He, as you mentioned earlier, Benny, he has the four fresh tires on his QVC Ford and as we ride with Todd Bodine there. But uh, Jeff Bodine might be in the best position. Of all. Three cars slow on the inside. Three car was slow? Is that, what, is that what he said? The three car slow? Oh, the 43 car slow on the inside. Okay, yeah, 43. I just, I just picked up the three part of that 43. <laughs> but Ned, I thought he, I heard exactly the same thing you did. And Ricky Rudd comes back out into the race. And by the way, Ernie Irvin is also back out there. The Bodines, of course, are from this area. They were born and grew up just miles from Watkins Glen International and doing a fine job here this afternoon as Bobby Hamilton is uh, 49 laps behind right now, but trying his best to get some more laps in. Up front, Schrader, Bobby Labonte. Then comes Brett. A bunch of Bodines. Yeah, Todd and Jeff. Here's Jerry Punch. Just spoke with Phil Hammer, who's the crew chief on the Budweiser Chevrolet for Ken Schrader. Said, hey, guys, you guys got to make it 35 laps. Can you make it? And Phil looked at him and said, sure, Doc, we can make it to the checkered flag and maybe all the way down to turn one or the end of pit road, but we'll need a truck to push us on a pace lap. That's how close it's going to be. All you need is enough to carry across the finish line in first place, and Schrader thinks he has that amount. And we see Jeff Bodine has been able to get by Fred. He now is in third spot with those fresh tires, Ned. And coming into the interloop here, he's uh, about 20 car lengths behind Bobby Labonte, but he has open space there, so we see if he can, can pick up any now that he's got cleared of his brothers. Jeff Bodine has two road course victories in his career. One was at Riverside back in 84, the other at Sears Point in 93. Labonte on the inside. Terry Labonte trying to get on the inside of Dahlenbach. Could not make it. That was for sixth position. Wally Dahlenbach in sixth. This is his bumper cam looking back on Terry Labonte. but they're in shuffled order from a few laps ago. And 72 laps have now been completed. We have 18 to go here at the butt of the Glen. Ken Schrader, Bobby Labonte, Jeff Brett, and Todd Bodine are the top five. We'll be right back. ESPN Speed World today live at Watkins Glen International in New York for the Bud at the Glen being brought to you by McDonald's on the track and in our restaurants just watch us cook by Chevrolet one car company has won more races in the history of NASCAR genuine Chevrolet and by Valvoline Duraplan the number one selling semi-synthetic motor oil at the butt at the Glen, it is Ken Schrader leading Jeff Bodine, Bobby Labonte, but positions has shuffled during our break. Well, Jeff Bodine has taken over that second spot from Bobby Labonte. Now we have the Labonte brothers in third and fourth, and we see Earnhardt up on the back of Brett Bodine. The 42 car of Todd Bodine in relief of Kyle Petty got off track a while ago and uh, was and lost several positions. May have thought he cut a tire, may have cut a tire, but this is how he got off course, way off course, as a matter of fact. Ned, he's completely on the grass yeah, all, all four times. Yeah, all four wheels were on the grass. That was his coming up through the S's there, Benny, and it cost him a lot of positions, and he had to ride gingerly there for a couple laps because he thought he did have a flat, flat tire. Let's drop back to 11. Make that 12th position. 
Here comes Dale Jarrett now on the inside of Wally Dollenbach headed for turn number one. And Jeff Gordon's car, the 24 car, is just not right. Now, a moment ago, a couple of laps ago, Dale Jarrett passed him going down in turn one. He got off in the dirt and lost a couple more spots. So Dale Jarrett moves up to eighth position. And there is Gordon in 10th. Michael Waltrip in 11th. Good showing for Michael. Jeff Bodine closing in on the leader of the race, Ken Schrader. Yes, he is, Bob. He's down to about six car lengths now as they hit out of turn nine. They pulled away from Bobby Labotti. So Jeff Bodine on a mission with those four new tires on his car. And remember, he was staying out in front of Dale Earnhardt and them before when they had new tires on. And he had used tires on before he made his pit stop. He's got a good car, and he knows how to get around this racetrack. Martin Martin goes by Brent Bodine, takes over the sixth spot. I don't think I ever pointed out that Hunt Strickland uh, stayed in the pits for 45 laps. He's back out there. Only two cars are officially out of the race. That's Dick Trickle and Ricky Craven. As a matter of fact, because he's out there making laps, uh, Hunt Strickland has just moved up one spot to 37th. See Jeff Gordon going by Wally Dollin back. That gets him up to ninth spot. And Dale Jarrett on the inside of Brett Bodine taking over the seventh spot. Maybe I've seen more passing up through these edges today than I ever remember on this road course. I guess we got some engine like Jarrett has in that car. If that helps. They are going after that for doggone sure. Look like Terry Labon is on the inside of his brother. What he up there he is, man. And he has made the pass. Terry has moved up to the third position as Jeff Ladine continues to close in just a little bit on Ken Schrader. Here's Schrader, 25th race. This is his 26th road course race. His best was a fourth at Watkins Glen in 94. He has 12 top 10 finishes, two top five at Watkins Glen in 10 events. But the lead is dwindling as Jeff Bodine stands on the hammer. Let's see what happens as they come back the straightaway. Well, guys, there are two fellows that need to win in NASCAR Winston Cup racing, Jeff Bodine and Ken Schrader. They both need to win very badly. Let's look again at how Terry Labonte was able to get by his brother, Bobby. He just moved over on coming into the inner loop, Bob, and outbreaked him coming in there. And, of course, uh, Bobby didn't resist him, let him go. He knew he had a faster car. Ken Schroeder looks back at Jeff Bodine. And he's there now, Benny. He is going to come out of the inner loop. Jeff Bodine looks on the inside, but he can't quite do it. But he's working on him. And here's an AutoZone on-track interval, and you can see how he has closed the gap from 2.3 seconds on lap 73 to now just a matter of car lengths on lap 77. He has been fast on each of the five laps that we tied. And there we see the cut through turn 10. He'll turn back to the right to turn 11 and complete one more lap. Lap number 78, 12 laps to go. Hey, guys, the Ward Burton car is very, very slow. He didn't even go through the inner loop. He just came straight through. He's coasting, it looks like, and I'm not sure that he would be able to get. I don't think he can get back to the garage area. And now he's going to pull it off the racetrack, down on the inside, totally out of the way. That's good things on his part. So we may not have a caution. Had the car stopped close to the racetrack, we may have off the racetrack and so the green flag remains out and the battle up front continues Trader backs off Bodine with those four fresh tires heading into the interlude here Bodine has been gaining in this area lately and it's still a car in as he behind he closes in a little tighter as they go out of turn nine this long sweeping downhill turn right hand Back towards turn 10, guys. Chevy versus Ford here. Schrader in a Chevy, Bodine in a Ford. Ford has won six of the last seven races in a road course in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. Coming up is a good passing point. All you have to do is outbreak the
the guy ahead of you. Jeff will not make an attempt, however, on this lap. And Terry Labonte, the Kellogg's car, is gaining on these two cars. So Jeff Bodine, if he possibly can get by Kenny Schrader, he's going to have to do it quickly. Yep, because it'll become a three-car race then. Then you not only have to drive offensively, you have to drive defensively if Terry Labonte gets up there. Ken Schrader's best finish in 1996 was at Daytona, the very first race of the year. He ran third. He has the lead at the moment, but is under a considerable amount of pressure from Jeff Bodine. 79 laps to go. Or 79 laps completed, 11 to go here at the Bud at the Glen. Back in just a moment. Great battle for the lead at the butt of the Glen. Ken Schrader, Jeff Bodine, and Terry Labonte running nose to tail with nine laps to go. Ken Schrader, the leader of the race, last won 159 races ago. That was in June of 1991 at Dover. How about Jeff Bodine? Well, his last win was 55 events ago at North Wilkesboro in November of 19, October of 1994. Man, it looks like the Kenny Schrader just got a little bit of a horsepower advantage over Bodine. He comes up through those S's very strong, Benny, but then Bodine picks it back up when they get into the inner loop here and going through turn nine. Of course, those new tires, I'm sure, helps them to come up on Rusty Wallace. Rusty pulls totally away, gets out of the way of them as they head out of turn nine here. There's a battle between Dale Jerry and Dale Earnhardt as they battle for the sixth position, but Ken Schrader is doing a great job of using the racetrack to his advantage. Still the Dale and Dale show back there, but not for first and second the way they started, but rather the battle for sixth position. Dale is sixth, Earnhardt is sixth, and Jarrett is seventh. Here comes the leaders once again, completed one more lap. There the Bud crew is everything's okay. Jerry Bud, there's a track to lead, Jerry. You think this Budweiser crew isn't in this race, guys? I mean, they are so pensive standing on the wall. And a moment ago, and Bonine is side by side with their driver trying to make a move. And he made the move. Well, not yet. There's still wheel to wheel. Man, some good racing up through the S's. Can you imagine that pass, Ned, through the Boy. S's? Yeah. What a move by Jeff Bodine. And the field is closing in as they come into the interloop here. Now Terry Labonte gets by Kenny Wallace. That's, I mean Kenny Schrader. That's, of course, teammate and teammate. Terry Labonte takes second, and Ken Schrader drops from first to third in this lap. Actually, about a half a lap. Now, now then, we're going to see if those four fresh tires. Watch this, folks. Down in turn two, Jeff Bodine almost make contact. Bodine gets far oh. sideways. And Schrader will not let go. And more contact right there. But they finally have to let go, <laughs> and Bodine goes on, takes the lead. Wow, that was a nice little battle there. The 99 car of Jeff Burton just spun. He was in 12th position, but is going to fall back now. And the 88 car of Dale Jarrett may have a problem. Yeah, he was slow. You see cars passing him there, Bob. He's coming in, Ned. Transmission heading into the pit, but he's flat. Yep. So Dale Jarrett, who was running in seventh position, has to give it up. We've seen several cars off the course recently, and every time they do, they kick up a little more dust and debris onto the racetrack, and that could be what Dale Jarrett encountered. He's making his way very slowly at 35 miles an hour down pit road, finally arrives at the pit stall, and the crew goes to work on it. This is a tough break because it's going to hurt Dale in the points. Get a good run going, but has to give it up for... They made some contact with someone. We yep. see him working on the fender, the left front fender, so maybe he and Earnhardt made some contact. He goes back out. Our focus attention at the front of the field once again. Jerry? Well, he did make contact, Benny Parsons, and apparently he had to come in. I mean, this, his left front tire was almost completely shredded. In fact, most of the tread is completely off, and the cord is showing. I don't think Dale Jarrett would have made another half a lap as we take a look. Maybe we can show you this tire as Todd oh. Parrott, the crew, working on it. And we'll try Kenny, to Kenny Schrader ran out of gas. Schrader ran out of gas. 
There are less than six laps to go, and Schrader has slowed on the front stretch. And that's the worst place in the world to run out because it's 2.4 miles back to the entrance to Pit Road. There's no way in the world he can coast all the way back. I don't know where he's going to stop. Boy, they thought they could make it all the way, and they, they like a long way making it all the way, didn't they? Yeah, six laps. Jeff Bodine has pulled away a little bit from Terry Labonte. Once he got by Kenny Schrader, Labonte had closed right in on him, but Jeff Bodine pulling away now to about a 12 car in lead. Good battle is for third position as Mark Martin comes up and challenges Bobby Labonte. We watch from the top of uh, Mark Martin's car now. Uh, Jeff Bodine is in no trouble in terms of fuel because he came in on lap 63. He shouldn't be. He chased four tires, filled the car up with fuel, and the next lap, the caution flag fell. A huge break for Jeff Bodine, and he is trying his best to make the most of that break. Kenny Schrader just went through here, Benny, so he's gotten this far. I think he'll make it back to the pits. All right, but boy, good. he's losing a lot of positions. Yep. Jerry, what happened to Schrader? Was it fuel? No, Bob, it wasn't fuel. It's that typical Kenny Schrader look. I mean, you just can't believe it. Kenny just radioed a minute ago and told Phil Hammer something broke in the drive line. He's got fuel, but the car this is not running well at all, so he's barely going to make it back, maybe. Wow. Well, hats off to Kenny, who uh, had a great show out there today. By the way, the 43 car you probably saw, Bobby Hamilton has pulled off the racetrack again. He's going to finish back in about 38th position, our Fran Field summary for you as we continue to focus on this battle between Mark Martin and up ahead, Bobby Labonte for the fourth, make that third place. The last couple of laps, Jeff Bodine has increased his advantage by two tenths of a second. Yeah, he's pulling away. Kenny Schrader, when he came down the front straightaway, something puffed out the exhaust. I thought that he had run out of fuel, but obviously that was the engine blowing that I saw. This is the best battle on the racetrack. Martin and Bobby Labonte. You know, Jeff Bodine came into this race with the distinction of having led the most laps by a non-winner. He had led 321 laps. I have 32 laps, I should say, in 1986. Did not win this race. 1996? In 86. 86. Say. Yeah. So, uh... He may be able to pull off the victory here this afternoon. You go in the bottom of the barrel, pull that stuff out of your ball back in 1986. Well, at least I got it. <laughs> Mark Martin within a car length for third. Battle for three. There he comes. He's looking on the inside, man. Trying to get down on the inside as they come into the inner loop here. Let's see if he pulls it off. And yes, he does. So Mark Martin takes over third. Bobby Labonte drops to fourth. Jeff Gordon is in fifth place. Dale Earnhardt sixth. Michael Waltrip seventh. Then it's a little ways back to the eighth place car of Wally Dallenbeck. That Kenny Schrader just went by us a moment ago. The car is still running, although slow it slowly. There we see Jeff Gordon trying to get by Labonte. And Jeff begins a move upward after losing positions earlier. A reminder that Alan Bestwick will be joined by Mark Martin for NASCAR Shop Talk immediately following coverage of the Bud at the Glen. Jeff Bodine, there is his advantage on Terry Labonte. Uh, Terry got a tough break, caught Hutt Strickland going in the corner on the outside. That had to cost him at least a half second on Jeff Bodine. And Earnhardt He's getting tired of leading I think he, he should be. He should be awfully tired, and he looked like he'd gone off that corner. But Dale, there's only three laps to go. I'm sure Richard Childress is telling him that. Congratulations to Paul Andrews. He has been named the Western Auto Mechanic of the Race for the Bud at the Glen. Crew chief on the number seven car, driven by Jeff Bodine. Well, can the hometown favorite pull off a win here today? As I mentioned, the Bodine grew up just a few miles from Watkins Glen. See the disadvantage that Terry Labonte had catching that slower car going in the yep. corner? Had to be a half second. And where is Dale Earnhardt? There he comes. There is Jeff Gordon. Here is Dale Earnhardt running in sixth position. Well, we thought the 43 car pulled off the racetrack, but he's trying to make it around. Bobby Hamilton staying out there. Dale Earnhardt running in sixth position. That right door on Earnhardt's car has some rather significant damage to it. Two laps to go now 
for Jeff Bodine, whose best finish in 1996 was a third at Pocono. He's about to register win number 18 in his career if he can hold it together for another lap and a half, and if he can stay ahead of Terry Labonte for that long. And Jeff Gordon just passed the 18 car and moved into fourth. Jeff Gordon got a tough, uh, got a real break early and made some contact with his teammate Terry Labonte. Had knocked the tire, the fender on the tire. They had to stop. They got a caution flag, gave him a stop, knocked that fender out. So now he's back up to four spots. But here comes Jeff Bonine off turn 11 for the start finish line. And they're now showing the white flag. One more lap to go. 2.4 miles for Jeff Bodine whose best finish here previous to today was a second in 1990. There is Schrader, who led this race for quite a while. Jeff passed him. Schrader stays out there, but has fallen all the way back to the last car on the lead lap, 25th spot. As a matter of fact, Jeff Bodine just lapped him, but he will still be 25th, now 24 cars in the lead lap. What a victory this is going to be for Jeff Bodine. Man, I'm telling you, look, he's waving to the crowd as he goes by. <laughs> Ned, is he going to wave to you, Ned? He probably will. He feels good out there. He's got himself a pretty good little lead, but he needs to keep his eye on the road and, and be very careful as he goes through all of these turns. But he's got everything under control. Ned, I think, we, I think we need to not only salute the driving ability of Jeff Bodine, but also the strategy that they, they played out in this race. That was just as much a factor as anything. Oh, it was the key factor. I don't think there's any question about that. That was a very, very smart move, the way they did it. Stayed out there and then made a green flag pit stop. Caution came out. Everybody else came in. And he was up towards the front. And as a result, he had the car to stay up front and head towards you and Victor. And here is Jeff Bodine coming off corner number 11 and getting the checkered flag. He wins the butt of the Glen. Terry Labonte is second, followed by Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte, and Dale Earnhardt. See Michael Walter coming across in the seventh spot. Good Eddie, run. Eddie Wood told me this morning he'd die for a top ten. Eddie, you got it, buddy. Here comes a mess off the corner. Dolan back and Morgan Shepard and look like Nemechek. got a spot. Morgan Shepard ninth and Wally Dolan back in tenth. And there is one, folks, trust me, there is one happy guy. We've seen Paul Andrews pull off the same kind of strategy when he was working with Alan Kowicki, the late Alan Kowicki. And it's good to see Jeff Bodine and the team celebrating the victory at his hometown track here this afternoon. Born in Elmira, grew up in Shemung, wins the butt of the Glen. We'll be back in just a moment to talk with him. Well, he's not made it to victory lane yet, but he's almost there, and he's saluting the crowd all the way around. Jeff Bodine winning here this afternoon. A reminder to stay tuned because Shop Talk with Alan Bestwick and his special guest Mark Martin will be coming up in just a few moments after we conclude our coverage of the Bud at the Glen. Wow. First time since North Wilkesboro in 1994, Jeff Bodine records his 18th career NASCAR Winston Cup win. Here comes Dale Earnhardt, and you can see the pain on his face. But Earnhardt withstood the pain and the agony and drove the car to a sixth-place finish. Here's the McDonald's Winner's Circle interview with Bill Weber. Well, I'll tell you, just about everybody Jeff Bodine knows here in the Finger Lakes region is here. Jeff, welcome home. Congratulations. Yeah, this is home in two ways. Back home in Chemung and Chemung County and Victory Lane. Oh, thank God for this, I tell you. He's got me through a lot of 
struggles in my life in the last two years. He got me through a lot today, I'll tell you. This guy was terrific. Uh, the guys, Paul Andrews, Barry Preziosi, you guys at the end of the shop, it paid off finally. A great strategy, too. Everything fell your way, Jeff. We planned that two days ago, three days ago, that strategy. We stuck to it, and it worked. Uh, unbelievable. Paul, <laughs> great, Jeff. Yeah. That was uh, great. This is fantastic. Our sponsor, QVC. Hey, we can do a lot of shopping tonight. We won. We're shopping QVC. Hey, <laughs> Jeff Bodine in victory lane to Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Dale, you made it, my friend. Incredible. 90 laps. No one thought you could make it that far. How do you feel? <laughs> I can't I can't say that on TV. <laughs> I know you're hurting. I gotta thank David Green for coming up and helping us out and uh standing by for me and the car was great. The car I, I, I was a little soft on brakes there at the end. I'd used them pretty hard all day, but you know, I just didn't have nothing there at the end to run with the brakes and uh I think the driver's giving out some too. How's the shoulder and how's the chest? Uh, it's I know what's there. <laughs> Man, incredible. Remarkable that he could run 90 laps, Bob, and still climb out of the car. Bob? Yeah, it was an amazing run by Dale Earnhardt and also by Jeff Bodine. We take a look at the unofficial results of this race. We remind you that we'll be at uh, Michigan International Speedway next weekend for both Bush Grand National and the Winston Cup race. You see there that uh, Ken Schrader finished in 25th position after leading in the late stages of the race, and only two cars were behind the wall and out of the event when it ended. The points, Terry Labonte retains the lead. Jeff Gordon moves up to third, Dale Jarrett back to fourth, and Mark Martin in fifth position. Thanks for joining us here at Watkins Glen International. ESPN, a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.